The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Becoming a member at Navy Federal can help you earn more and save more. You can learn all about this at NavyFederal.org. Get to hit that like and subscribe button wherever you get your show. So today, before we kick it off with our special guest, let's get to our weekly Patreon question of the day. And we were actually just talking about this one before we hit record. So what is a movie quote that you use on a regular basis? I would have to say, uh, Dan, that's a good question. I think you use enough dynamite there, Butch. <laughs> <laughs> what movie is that from? Butch Cash and Sundance Kid. They blew up the train. I remember you using that line when we were standing by that. E- we first got into country in Iraq, and that EOD guy was standing out there blowing up that that building. And you jumped under the Hilux, and I jumped into the cab. I, I, Do you remember that? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, we. Uh, so I've actually heard you say that line before. So what happened is well, we flew in. Uh, it was a overt. Uh, overt, not covert, uh, SR that we took over from the Polish Grom on the Shot Owl Rob. The, uh, I was setting up stuff. We detached the EOD team to blow up two bunkers that had artillery shells, did, did a shot. We went the next day to verify what was left, and of course there's artillery shells. So we did uh, two hours of stacking up uh, artillery shells and taking our standard charges that we had with us flat out there. Uh, two minute fuses offset uh, the time to pull one two three pull you know the motors running drive away with uh, the vehicles to what I believed was a safe distance which it was technically technically in the end and uh, get there's out manual safe distance and then there's then there's a safe to distance. find out yeah so I was just happy not to see any uh, Willie Pete or anything else in the stack at UD I already verified that but uh, we got, I want to say, a good uh, about a mile away. Parked the Hiluxes, rolled down the windows so the shockwave wouldn't do anything. And the shot, uh, when it went, you know, just before it went, uh, our lieutenant looked at me and said, Hey, Chief, are, are we at a good distance? I was like, Oh, yeah, I think so. And, yeah, I feel good with it. Shot went. And then you hear the shrapnel uh, coming up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming out and then start raining around us. And of course, I did what any good any good team guy would do is I grabbed the lieutenant by his back strike right. plate, pulled him into me. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, using you for cover. What do you think oh I'm doing? <laughs> I'm using you for a shield. What do you think? <laughs> and as oh these shrapnel pieces rained around us, I, I grabbed up two hot ones and gave them to him. I go, here are your souvenirs. We're still good for now. And I grabbed two for me and uh, it cleared, but it was one of those, you know, yeah, hey, it worked. See, I told you we're we're at a safe distance. Nobody's hurt. And you got your oh souvenir. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> terrifying. What movie quote do you you use? Marcus speaks in movie quote language. He has his own language. <clears throat> the one that pops into my head most of all that I don't say out loud all the time is English motherfucker. Do you speak it? <laughs> yeah. From 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 Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. What about land your plane? And then, uh, well, I said that to you, and then that's forever. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, with uh, with my brother Morgan, it's like I told you we weren't getting involved, right? From yeah. Tombstone, but yeah, I have. That's tough for someone who speaks that language because of m- when the moment presents. Mm-hmm. You know, what in the wide, wide world of sports yeah. is going on here? I mean, you hear something from somebody in the most abstract, and I'm, the the best part is, is right in the middle of chaos. And it makes you completely forget about the moment. You want to turn around and go, I know where that came from. Yeah. And then the moment's usually over. Yeah. It's like a save. Yeah. It's it's the best. It's a little reset on yourself. I mean, because if you don't know what to say, you what it also does is it lets everyone know exactly what you're thinking and how you see it. Yes. You can either ratch, yeah. ratchet up a little bit. Yeah, ratchet up a little bit. But more, more importantly, you can also calm, calm it down. Calm it down, yeah. With me, without me, right? Yeah. With yeah. me, without yeah. me. Is that a movie quote? It sure is. Absolutely one? one of it. Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. I'll let you figure it out. I, yeah. yeah I'm, that's it's that's a, hard, a good question, though. There's so many good movies. That's a very good question. There's a uh, go-tos. Uh, What's yours, Hunter? Uh, one I was actually just saying the other day, <clears throat> I find myself saying it anytime I'm on an elevated surface. I look down, say, aim for the bushes. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It, it, that's what I'm saying. The moment presents yeah. itself. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm, I'm hauling ass what in my truck going that? around a corner, it's guys. like, hey, man, these tires will hold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the beginning of the other guys. Yeah, the other guys? Yeah. That's another Samuel L. Uh, and Dwayne when they're jumping from yeah. the building. Yeah, special sports that's zip so line. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. I, I literally don't have one. There, there's, <laughs> there's, there's. I feel like that that kind of actor, those generational actors like Dwayne and Samuel, they they taught us how to speak. In For certain. sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so if I ever screw something up, man, look to them. They, they taught me everything. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. <laughs> it's your fault, Samuel. Oh my gosh. There are so many, so many good one-liners out of '80s movies yeah, too. The best. Are, yeah, that are just over the top. It's like. Did, did they really say that? I feel That's like you awesome. say a lot of things from uh, Three Amigos. Too. I do. And Team America. So we were yeah. in Afghanistan. Team America. Every time we'd zip line out of the back of a helicopter, it was like, America. <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> I mean, we would say that out loud as we were running. And as soon as someone would get tired, you hear, America. And everybody would be like, fuck yeah. <laughs> we, we did that. For sure. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right. That's good. That was a good question, man. Very good. And you have to lose all that with, well, you, you know what you have to do is you have to, when you have kids online, you got to change your movie profiles. Mm-hmm. So you know, those lines stick even harder because you can't use some of the stuff we use. And it's amazing what kids pick up. What they, everything. We're in, we're in Hawaii and I was driving with, then at the time my son was uh, four and we we're driving on to Howard Air Force Base and he looked over at a big hole in the ground. They were doing some you know, facility repair and he goes, holy shit, that's, that's a big hole. <laughs> I, you know, well, yeah, I pulled the car over where, where'd you learn how to Where'd say you? that <laughs> who'd you learn that from and I didn't realize it you know because I, I didn't I didn't say like any words like that when he was that age when he was a kid but Absolutely. showed him October Sky and there's a scene and they're going oh, holy shit that's a big hole oh my it's like, gosh it's one of our favorite movies I didn't realize <laughs> I'd pre-fed it to him that's like, hilarious okay you're good you're good don't worry son you're not in trouble yeah just don't say that around your mother yeah. <laughs> so I was trying to be a good father one time when Axe came bebopping in. I was watching, um, I forget what it was, and I went to go change the channel. He's like, wait a second, Dad, there's a great scene coming up. There's this huge crocodile, and you're going to love it. Oh, Lake Placid? He, yeah, Lake Placid. I was watching yeah. it. Yeah. I was like, who shows you this? He goes, Grandmama. She lets us watch everything. I'm like, that, oh, yeah. that's your mama. That's grandma, all right? That's she, my mother. That makes sense. Doesn't make complete sense. She watching Lake Placid. Terminator. She had me watching awesome. Jaws when I was in the crib, man. Jaws, Jacked me up for life, dude. Yeah. I'm still Predator. messed up from that movie. I mean, they, and Predator. When yeah. they were four. Yeah. When Axe and Addy were four. That was four. her favorite movie. It was like Frozen to my kids. And Finding Nemo, that's what they get. I got Jaws. Yeah. You know, American Psycho. Yeah. Jaws. Josie Wells, stuff like that. Josie you know, Wells. Oh, yeah. Freaking oh, yeah. solid man movies. Oh, yeah. Which oh, yeah. Is any why any you are the way Dirty you are. Harry, Clint Dirt, Eastwood. Thank you. Go Clint ahead. Eastwood. Go ahead and make my day. Make my day. Oh, movie quote lines. There you go. Let's start with, with the best ones. <laughs> All the way to Arnold when I'll be back. Yeah. I'm a redneck, so I'm going you know, to be right back. I say it. Yeah. All right. So, the way we, when we get one of our own in here, we like to back this up. And since you and I have known each other my entire life, I, <clears> I, I, uh, I'm excited about this one. So let's just, from from the very beginning, where were you born? I was born in The Dalles, Oregon, the only the name uh, in the United States. It's the end of the Oregon Trail before they had to, you know, as they did the wagons across the Oregon Trail, that's where they stopped. The Cascades stopped and they either had to make rafts and try and shoot the rapids, get down to the coast, or they had to do a trail pioneered by uh, Lewis and Clark. Uh, to get up over the Cascade Mountains, and there's still rope burns on the trees. You can still see the wagon ruts. Uh, Have you been watching um, Yellowstone and what's the one? What's the one before that? 1890. 1893. Yeah. Have you been watching that? Yeah, that's your it. people, right? Oregon trail yeah, people. Absolutely. Yeah, that's where they were going to Oregon. I you, feel like they back in the day they were hard. I mean, not that you. It was tough, folks. It was. It was. It was tough, folks, and uh, getting out there. So that's how you were made. Huh? You come from them people. <laughs> yeah, when when people tell me they grew up uh, in states with you know, hey, we got you know we got mountains where we live here. I'm like, dude, I grew up in the Cascades. You know, the hills are five thousand feet. The Cascades are, you know, up in the jets jet stream, and you know, every now and then one of them will blow its top like St. Helens did. You know, it's, it's so. What's your what's your dad do? He was a World War II uh, generation with my mom, and he got out and. Worked as a civil engineer, and he, he uh, built dams along the Columbia River for uh, uh, the Corps of Engineers, as he called it, the best dam years of his life. And, <laughs> and there's uh, dad joke. Yeah, when the when my dad went from project to project, 
he, there was kids that were born. I was being the last uh, six kids, five boys, one girl. I'm the youngest. She's the oldest. Uh, we could talk about her. She knows more demolition than you and I. And about she, that. And about she, that right. Yeah, tons of it. And she introduced me to an old UDT class six guy who's who in the zoo. Uh, but I digress. The Dalles was the last project he did. Uh, there's a, a dam at the Dalles, but upriver in a place called John Day that feeds in a tributary of the Columbia was the one he was working on. My mom said, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. We're, 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 sitting, we're sitting our feet down, and this is going to be it. So he continued to work and, and went around uh, different projects with uh, Bechtel Corporation. You know, I had a brother born in Brazil, you know, brother and sister born up in uh, upstate New York before he came and did the, the Columbia projects. And then two of us on the Columbia. You still got all of them? Brothers and sisters? They still, yes. alive, still alive? Yep, yep. Anybody in the military? My next older brother uh, joined the Navy before me. And uh, he had gone out and he was a fire control technician. And back in the 80s, I graduated in 83. He graduated ahead of me in 81. Uh, I knew I needed to get out of the small town of 10,000 I was in, get out and see the world. I'd seen a demonstration on the Columbia River of uh, an old Vietnam era patrol boat like she in uh, Apocalypse Now that they take up the river, exactly that boat. And I didn't know they, had, you know, I was ignorant at the time. There wasn't, you know, access to information like you have now. Uh, went for a ride on it and I was just enthralled. And they spoke of then what was Brownwater Navy and the SEAL teams okay. working together. That's how they said it? It was the SEAL teams? Yes. And that was your first introduction to to the that that was it, and then I hadn't heard seals, and I didn't know where to look it up, and of course I asked my brother, and it was just crazy rumor and hearsay of what seals were, and I because they didn't those those guys didn't talk about that kind of stuff to us Nothing. in Oregon. That's like Rambo country, right? Isn't that where they filmed all? Yeah, up in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't it the only thing I knew, Vietnam? They didn't talk to anybody about anything. Didn't know about seals. I knew UDT growing up when when I was four watching the Apollo, uh, you know, the moon landing. Uh, you know, everybody wanted to be an astronaut. And I was like, yeah, that's way cool. But who are those guys in the wet suit yeah. on the side of the capsule out in the middle of the Pacific? Well, they're UDT. And I was like, see, I never noticed that until you pointed that out to me when we were watching um, Apollo 13 on TV. And when they shut the door on the helo on the deck, you could see the Freddy the Frog emblem on it and Sammy the Seal. I know the guy that painted that. I, and so now, now I really started looking for it. And it's everywhere. Anytime yeah. when, they were, when we were hauling those old the astronauts back in the day in, that was us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we didn't have anything else going on. Yeah, and I, you know, I was, I was. <laughs> what a great fraternity. Yeah, and I was, I was like, this is awesome. You know, Pete Carillon is the one that did that, and uh, he painted on the USS Midway, uh, which he also did for the movie. You know, the guy snuck up there at night before the recovery, knowing that it'd be on live television. television. They painted it, of course. Uh, way to go. Yeah, exactly. I they, mean, way to freaking go. Still alive. Uh, Pete no, Carroll just, yeah. just passed away, unfortunately. Oh. There's guys in the platoon that were there. Pete okay. the Pirate. His yeah. paintings are legendary. I have one. Oh, have yeah. two. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, one was, I was supposed to give to President Bush, and I actually forgot. All characters. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. Yeah. He got, how'd he get hurt? He was... No, uh, that's Smokey. Yeah, that's Smokey. Now, uh, Pete, I, I, he died of cancer. Cancer, that's right. Yeah. So, big okay, C, so you're... You're in Oregon. You hear about the SEALs and the Brownwater Navy. How did you actually get into the SEAL teams? This is pre-internet. Correct. This so, is, you this don't early 80s, know right? anything right. about. So that was my sophomore year. My junior year, uh, a Master Chief and Lieutenant SEAL came up and jumped in, parachute jumped into an air show across the river uh, from us in the small, where the airport is. Uh, parachuted in, went to hand out pamphlets. My father didn't want me to have anything to do with the SEAL teams because you, you, you don't have a future. You'll just be a mercenary, and you won't. You know, you need to go in and get the GI Bill. I'd say the worst thing you could have said to you or me back it in is, them days. And that that <laughs> coupled with my my next older brother, who you're always competitive with. Yeah, going. You'll never be able to do it. Well, there's that too. As soon as they like, say that, and I was like, done. That's the wrong reverse psychology you use on someone like us. Absolutely, absolutely. And it was like, okay, yeah, let's 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 see what I can do. And uh, joined the Navy, went to boot camp, made lifelong friends with a the guy there, still friends to this day, and got out of boot camp uh, just before Thanksgiving. And uh, he said, oh, by the way, my dad, you know, he's in the Navy. The first time he told me, this guy had been called out uh, of of boot camp uh, to do the SEAL PT by the motivator that was there. 
guy by the name of Half House McCarthy. God rest his soul. Great. Senior great. Chief McCarthy. Mike McCarthy. Yeah, Mike McCarthy. That's him. Yeah. That's Viet- Vietnam. Oh, I know exactly who he is. And uh, so he called him out. Uh, I. It took me. I wasn't a strong runner because you know I didn't hadn't thought about this or planned it. So I'd never been distance running. I I could run. What could what was you what were you good at when you got in? Was it swimming? Well, I was comfortable with swimming. I was strong, but I hadn't swam in the ocean. I'd been in cold water and lakes and rivers. So what, O course and climbing? O course, yep, and climbing and uh, upper body. I was a wrestler, like a lot of guys were wrestlers. Yeah. And uh, I had to learn a side stroke uh, in boot camp on, on the table and, you know, passed it and then just continuously worked on it. He tells me, oh, by the way, my dad's coming to graduation. Oh, by the way, he's uh, Master Chief of Command at SEAL Team 5 and had been so for, at that time, 11 years. So I was like, ooh, ooh. Ooh, that's that that's good and bad. It's good it's something to know, but also I knew that's yeah. not not so good because never know him. Yeah. After gracious enough to invite me a couple weeks later over for a Thanksgiving uh, meal, home cooked. Uh, he had me write down my name, my social, my reporting date to Buds. Mm-hmm. Got hooked up. Walk down the street, give it to uh, his old. You know, both of these are Vietnam buddies of his. One was a lieutenant that happened to be, he was a guy that Mass Chief that jumped in, the lieutenant in charge of first phase, a guy by the name of Tommy Bunce, who I still refer to as Instructor Bunce, uh, handed him my info, uh, handed it to Mass Chief uh, Kirk Scarborough, who is the CMC. So when you show up to training, you want to be, uh, you know, as great. Nobody, you want anybody to know that you're even there. No. And uh, Because guys, if you get referred to, if, like, if you go to a team guy and be like, hey, I'd like to go to Bud's, can you hook me up? And be like, oh, yeah. The guys that are waiting on you when you get there are waiting on you. Oh, yeah. Just to tear you down, just to prove that your guy wasn't good enough. That, it's a competition. I don't know why we do that, but we do. I'll, I'll tell you that because my cousin went through after me, and I made a phone call. Uh, you know, hey, don't give him any extra special attention. That, right? And, yeah. Hey, take it easy on him. Yeah. Hey, be a, little, be a little easy on this dude. She, oh, man. But, uh, so, I, you know, was a pre-training for, uh, you know, for uh, – Dave Bowron and uh, you know Admiral Losey's class out to San Clemente Island got put through the ringer there. Uh, there's eight of us that went out, and only two of us actually ended up completing training. Uh, but even out there, it was there was no no love spared this for us. Pre-training for buds, right? This is okay. It was it was different, structured different back then. I literally would have been in the class ahead of me had I shown up like three days earlier. It would have been that's yeah. your class. Get your boots mm-hmm. on. They're on a run. Go. Yeah. Uh, but it gave they don't do it like that anymore. No, it's all no. changed. Yeah, which is good. It's better. They've gotten smart. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Lessons learned. So uh, I had a lot of lessons learned out there. One of the hardest swims I ever did was, uh, either checking you pre-training or not, is a lieutenant uh, came to check in. He was going to second phase, and they needed a guy to uh, basically be his his uh, his bag carrier for. He wanted to go spear fishing, so I needed a guy to carry the guns, carry the the fish. And that was me. It didn't even have a wetsuit issued, didn't have fins issued. So we scrounged them up, borrowed them from the class. I'd never done a swim in the ocean like that in the water I'd go. And it was, it was, it was a different. Yeah. I, it was one of the pre gut checks. Like, that's that's gonna what that is, man. I, what kept me going was I'm going to get through this and I know I got a seal swimming with me, so it's all good. And if uncle in the great suit shows up, mm-hmm. he's going to have some fish. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but go to training I had once my class started after that, immediately day Went one in with one one twenty nine. Yep, one two nine, and uh, they immediately out of the the, the horde that's assembled said, uh, "Gothro, make yourself known. Get up front right now." All my hopes of being that gray man. And how old are you now? Uh, old enough to know better no. to say something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you still you're turning fifty nine. I'm turning fifty nine. No, 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 when you when you're oh no, I was I was uh, I was. Uh, 18 years old. I was going to say, you're still in your teens, right? Yeah, still 18. That's different. Turned 19. I had a greater appreciation. At that time, it was hard. My class officer ended up going through was 30 when he went through. Hard man. Oh, gosh. Hard man. Yeah, that's that's pretty tough. you got to get a waiver to get that. That, and uh, I tell you what, I mean, he was was a hard surfer. He was a former naval aviator. Uh, uh, Larry Lasky, upstanding, hard charging, just stud of a guy. And... uh, but I didn't appreciate what his 
recuperation time was at 30. You and I was at 18. Can you imagine it? going through buds at 30? Oh, man. Mm. Oh, man. I mean, that was my pissed off at the world age, 27 yeah. to 33, but still going back through there. I mean, that's why those waivers exist. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, like I said, they've they've gotten really smart on how to, to strengthen the guys to prepare them. Uh, go through it. Back then, it was, it was a shotgun blast and get on and prove yourself and – slow runner i'd have to run on the weekends do the yield course on the weekends you yeah know, to do that it was it was it was open at the time no longer now because you need a corman because of the injuries but the runs you can still do and it's yeah they didn't give a shit if we got hurt they really didn't they, 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 that wasn't part of the damn the program at all matter of fact that was like hey you, we need to run go out and run if you get hurt tough that, that's part yeah, of the stress they induce yeah. in the whole process that's why they we did. were talking about that earlier fundamentals well hold on we, one of the things that i hear every team guy of every generation say is that they were the last hard buds class well, so a, when you, with your buds class comparing it to today what's different well I, the guys will go into was i was i was a uh you know spring into summer class so they they work you and stress you differently they can't stress you like a winter class in the cold so they'll hammer you uh, as much as they can in the cold and the wet, always. Uh, but when it gets warmer and the water warms up, either okay, well we'll do that at night, or we're gonna we're gonna stretch you more on the runs. Like back then, uh, either you do a 14 mile run first phase. That was before all this. You would run down the beach, turn around in the Tijuana Bull Ring, then run back north. You know, continue past you know uh, the compound, go up to North Island, tour that, and come back. And you just didn't know when they were going to stop, and that was the point. That's why you say it's harder because what happens is is we'll go to we kill somebody, and it kind of sets a standard. So the next class after, they won't get a chance to do that. So and in fact, if you're if I'm 228 and you're 229, you're a pussy. Shut up. Get, get a haircut. Check the damn watch bill. Yeah. Him sitting in here, he's the hardest dude around. <laughs> he was my – That's I'm not kidding, man. That's the way when you – the best is when we have to do something really, really hard, then rank comes into play. And then once we get past rank, then it's that buds class, right? Yep. And that carries, that's respect. I'll never, one of the reunions we were at, I ran into a guy who had buds class one on his damn shirt. Yep. He was missing one arm and one leg, opposite side. And he looked at me like I was, he's like, you knew me, piece of shit. He's like, get, <laughs> go get me a beer. I'll be sitting right over here. You know, I mean, just barking orders at me. And I was like, yes, sir. Roger that. Respect goes up, not down. Yeah, I, I seen that with my my sea daddy, uh, the same man, the mass chief. He picked me up after Hell Week, uh, and has been been my mentor. We met him in you know uh, in uh, Uzbekistan when we're out there when he was doing That's right doing work. But uh, he took me to an East Coast reunion. Go to the breakfast. He's like, you know, don't get too blotto on the Friday night get together because we're going to the breakfast. See, you got to do something tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to tell him that. Yeah, no, team he, guys are he, dude. And he he knew. He, he's like, yeah, I know how you, I know how you're running. Your boys will be so pull the throttle back. And uh, it was set up on the East Coast at the Enlist Man's Club. And what they had was a main seating, then the dance floor. They put up seating, and then where the band normally is in the club, they had some tables up there. So up on those tables were the World War II guys. About just three tables, very few people. Yeah, no, no. The next race seating was a Korean guys. And the mosh pit down below was Vietnam and Ford. Ford yeah. There was a command mash chief of note uh, at the time. Uh, I'll throw names out. Pete Pullion walking around. He was his command mash chief. Uh, and one of the Vietnam guys, command mash chief by the name of uh, uh, Curtis, who was, I'm going to say he was the second or third guy to break the four minute. Uh, mile in the U.S. just a total, total animal. He said, "Hey, to pull you on. Hey, new guy, go get me some coffee." <laughs> and it was. Can you imagine that everybody could hear and everybody quiet. And bef while you're looking bug-eyed, the Korean guys go, "Who are you calling a new guy?" That's new right. Guy, you get us coffee. <laughs> yeah. How about <laughs> that? You see him turn, and, and you got to look up. Yeah, and then <laughs> flash, flash of another comment from from the stage. The World War II guys are like, "Oh, screw all you new guys." Yeah. He goes. You're going to get us coffee, and more importantly, you're going to serve our wives and girlfriends whatever they want. <laughs> it doesn't matter what and you've done or where if, you, it doesn't if, matter. Unless you're that guy, class one, you're a new guy. That's right. You're a new that, guy. That's how we set it up in the beginning, and it's still that's one of the things we keep alive. And the only time you'll ever really see it is when they put us all together, which is very rarely. Yeah. 
Well, from when Marcus was in to today, some of the differences, or one of them that I can think of is they don't have to paint their helmets anymore. What do you know of any actual differences from when you were in to like when Marcus was in? Well, the whole construct, uh, they, they have set up, uh, you know, the screening that you can go in and through the seal switch pipeline, uh, you obligate and they'll send you, when you go to boot camp, you'll end up uh, in Great Lakes, they'll form up a company with wickets to formally go through. They'll train you. It's a completely different type of individual you're dealing with. Mm. And uh, I'll say the guys are smarter, more well-prepared. Well, I, I completely agree with that. You know, and, and, and built harder, ready to go from day one rather than, the you know, just you know, get, out, get out there and get at it. Uh, so in that boot camp, uh, company will become your class and they'll add the officers as you show up to training but you have to hit wickets performance wickets before you even get to training and they've you know they've done that they find the attrition is still pretty much the same you, you still attrit the same people uh, but they're more better prepared uh, to get into it and go at it the best way I can describe that is from that movie soldier with Kurt Russell he's like man you had the old soldiers yeah. trained a certain way could do the job but did y'all do like boats on heads and logs and oh, yeah. all that? that. You away. had all that kind oh, yeah. of stuff. Yeah, it's still around. Yeah. All right, golfers. So you already know PXG for their dedication in crafting top tier, high performance golf clubs. But now they're bringing that same energy into apparel. Made with premium materials and cutting edge technology. PXG's apparel designed for peak performance, seamlessly transitioning from the course out to any occasion. I just got my hands on some PXG apparel, and I've got to say, I am very impressed. The quality, the style, and the fit are all top-notch. These pieces are designed for performance on the course, but also versatile enough to fit any other event. They've got everything from pants and polos to sweaters, hats, jackets, and so much more. PXG Apparel has you covered from head to toe, all in premium style. So, if you're looking for apparel that's easy to go from the course out to a fun night out, PXG Apparel is the way to go. Trust me, I promise you won't be disappointed. Just go check out the site. Elevate your style game with PXG Spring Summer 2024 Collection. Go head on over to pxg.com slash TNQ and you can save 10% on all apparel. That's pxg.com slash TNQ to save 10% on all apparel. pxg.com slash TNQ. Oh, yeah. I know that. I didn't know if they did it. The little then. the suck stuff. That's the thing. Is like budget's its own deal. Like it's miserable. I don't care how they have to change. They don't. That that part doesn't. It just sucks. Yeah. And then there's the stuff that goes into it. The little ingredients that yeah. each individual class of instructors bring to the table. <laughs> oh, they do. And I mean, you can't even. Devious. I don't care what you guys see on TV. What you see on that's what we let you see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> and, and there is no love in an instructor's heart. Oh no, none, 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 other than the love of punishing students. That's it. As like as they're sharpening their love while they're there, kind of kind of mentality, and they get told that, and it's so you're carrying a boat on your head, and uh, the instructor will say, you know, this this is a bit hard on you. We're gonna we're gonna lessen uh, the load on your head. We're gonna make it easier. We're gonna let all the air out of the boat because air has weight, and now you got a, instead of a rigid thing on your head, which is doable but now you got the big wet kind of rubber like, mop on your head oh my god well you were complaining about the other one so we thought we'd you know, exactly we're trying to help you out listening to you your can't needs. believe how they can turn around on you yep so it, you, it's it's a it's fun to watch you, you learn two things you learn to shut up uh you laugh about it when you can while you're doing it and everything that that sucks because you're all enjoying the same suck and then uh just keep moving on it you know just keep moving on i don't know how they don't i know they laugh Team, oh. team guys do that anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they go behind closed doors. They have to laugh. go behind the walls and laugh. That's why there's walls everywhere. Yeah. So they can go back and laugh after they get done doing that stuff to us. So you went in in 1983. Yes. And you just retired in November. I did uh, 40 years combined government service. I did 26 active duty, uh, retiring at Warcom. I went, last job was STV program manager for the vehicle that we both love and uh drive which is a generation behind what they have now with the new boat uh 
And then I was asked because doing commodity management, hey, there's an opening. Would you like to do it? And uh, for a while, I did uh, work for the surface support craft fleet, or as they tell people, all our support boats without guns, uh, homogenizing the fleet uh, across the force, uh, working to save money so you could put that money into other programs, i.e., you know, for the operators and the commanders. Uh, then I was asked to go over into another part of WARCOM to be the continuity of operations guy for the force, which is doing what we do, going out and making sure that the boss can do his job wherever, whenever, rain, storm, sun, or shine. And that's not so much me knowing how to do it, but knowing the people to assemble, you know, CBs, uh, technicians for the internet, uh, you know, physical security guys. There's so much that goes into it now. And I tell people it's like being the Maytag repairman, but you got a, you got a touch point and then COVID hit and we proofed, we proofed that, Hey, you know, it can be done. And it's, you know, we do it. I tell people we do it all the time with, you know, training exercises when we go places and when the boss up and relocates and sets down to visit someone, it's all or part of that, you know, umbrella function. So 40 years when you, okay. So when you first got your trident, walk us through that day and you being a new team guy. Where'd you, yeah, where they, where'd you, what was your first command? SEAL Team 3. Yeah. I was like the second wave of guys to get there, uh, not the commissioning, you know, second big wave of guys to show up. I wanted the West Coast, got the West Coast, uh, and it was great. And odd side note, uh, being new, it was a heavy flavor of SEAL Team 1 at the time, so a lot of SEAL Team 1 cadre came over and formed. And, and That's who they pushed over there, right? Yeah, and printed upon SEAL Team 3, and it was a unique time, too, because at the time they had just converted the old UDTs over uh, basically not even not even a year prior over, in you know, SEAL Team 5 was a UDT team that converted over. SEAL Team 4 was uh, converted from a UDT team. We were separate. We are still separated. They, they were, and they hadn't had a funding boost at all since after Vietnam, especially when they did that consolidation slash conversion, UDT slash SEAL, because before you could go either path and be either SEAL only yeah, they were different. or be UDT That's only. Right. Uh, what had happened is my CEO at the time, a brilliant man, Joe Quinn Cannon, uh, the first CEO, SEAL Team 3, went to D.C. and did uh, did incredible work in outfitting the team with its equipment, but looking larger because we are a team whole, he filled the West Coast with gear and you know, his, his component on the East Coast did the same thing, revitalized those old inventories at the old, the what, old yeah. SEAL teams, you know, with new equipment. Cause it's like new to, fuel. It's like adding new fuel into something, man, when, it, when you get something like that. We used to have to go up to, literally, we'd go up to, uh, the Marines always generally get, you know, kind of secondhand gear is what it was back then of the day. And then we would have to go to DRMO up at Camp Pendleton and get stuff that the Marines yeah, would discard, them. use and modify for us. It was, it was some skinny times and it's, it's good to see we're fully resourced, you know, with buildings. That's why they call us the Gypsy Camp crew, because when we rolled in, because back in the day, that's how it was. Oh, yeah. It made oh. up of a little bit of everything. Oh, yeah. It was uh, my first team deployment that we did. Uh, we didn't have vehicles. So uh, the CBs have battle switches on their six buys, and uh, they, they weren't stolen. They were just borrowed. Acquired. <laughs> with for uh, relocation. Spray painted, yeah, yeah. spray painted new numbers, and every week, uh, NCIS would come over with the CBs uh, looking, yeah, checking yeah. numbers, going, it doesn't, we didn't see anything get shipped in. Where did you guys get these? Oh, you know. I have no idea. Yeah, why did you just crudely <laughs> one line my name out of there and put yours over the top of it and, and mark it? My, no, no, it's already on there. My XO uh, at the time, John McTie, great man, would come out and say the CBs are looking, you know, for their vehicles and, you know, the platoons, you could hear the giggles in the formation. Just before we turned over and left, painted on the correct stenciled numbers, fill the back with spare parts, maintenance records, and beer, returned it to the CBs. They, you know, the Friday, yeah. right after they showed up uh, to do their last inspection, um, McTie put out, the CBs would like to thank whoever returned their vehicles with the beer, the spare parts, and <laughs> just ask it next time that you ask and would be happy to loan okay, so you. I, I learned that lesson from you when I got sent to airborne school, I got in trouble from one of the uh, sergeant majors. Mm -hmm. And then the next day he showed up and I filled his fridge from top to bottom with beer. And he still yelled at me, but he did it with a smile, but I didn't get in trouble. 
Yep. That was a great. If you if you're in the military, if you do something like we do, and you acquire something, if you give it back, make sure you give something with it. You have to. And you, you got to. That's the, otherwise they get pissed. And I would joke because I grew up later in the teams uh, that uh, pretty much all frogmen, if they're smart, uh, when they get into trouble and get caught, uh, you'll say the mortal words, and the officers will laugh at this. Uh, well, XO, it seemed the logical thing to do at the time, time, time. <laughs> but in retrospect, I see the, the, the folly of my decision making, but I will stand accountable for my actions. Clearly, clearly. And they just want that acknowledgement that, okay. Never. All you got to do is say it. Yep. That's all. And most everybody wants. That's all they want to hear. I just want to hear you freaking say it out loud, man. I think that that resonates to just everyone in society. It should. Society. It does. It, if it does for us, like the, the alpha apex predators of humankind. Yeah. If that works for us, mm-hmm. and it does, we we all have hiccups. And like it was told to me in a in a much more frank sense, is my see daddy said, okay, you had your fuck up. Prove it. It's a hiccup, and it's not a habit. Because if it's a habit. Uh, you're going to be very short-lived in this community. Everybody has a hiccup. Heck, and I, let people you did that learn. Same thing to me. Go ahead. Let people mm-hmm. learn and move on. Yeah, that's how we know you learned. Yeah. Like when you when you would sit and I, when I got in trouble with you those two few times. <laughs> those two few. There was a few of them. <laughs> yeah. I remember after you tore, tore my ass up, I was straight up from it. Then afterwards, you came down. The time on the submarine when I was sitting in there doing my homework you assigned to me, and you sat down to me like, "Hey, look, you ain't done nothing. I ain't done." Yeah. Matter of fact, you got caught. I didn't. I remember you just like, it's okay. Just uh, you said the exact same thing. Just make sure it's not a habit. It's just a hobby. I was like, Roger that. And then that's over. Yep. And you feel better. It, and that's it. It's, like I thought for sure you hated me. By the way, you know that it came down. But I was like, no, he actually loves me. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done that. Yep. I it was. I have a soft soft spot in my heart. Uh, when the platoon formed up, we had a majority of Texans, you know, because I found out where all the guys were from. I said, all right, you got you got a week and a half. I want to see some Texas bling around here. And they didn't disappoint me. And, uh, you know, I come from Oregon, and I told them I'm a hillbilly, you know, literally a hillbilly from small town. And uh, same work ethic, same background growing up in, in a family. And I've, I've, I've met the crew and the rabble rousers, and, which is just – there's a commonality you find in, in team guys when you, you can back out of the role and look and see how your your brothers in the teams grew up. There's so many similarities and so many stories that, unfortunately... Can't believe it. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't get to see that until Red Wings went down and we're going to services, talking to families. You guys set up stuff, that, hey, let's get together in times that are not like this and just celebrate that and get to know people, mm-hmm. which is awesome, and see community and see people, but... Yeah, you got to give people a break. Everybody, and it's what I was told to me. It's what I told to you and the platoon. Hey, I want you to hang it out there. I'll never forget when you said that. You guys hang it out there and just keep pushing until I tell you that's far enough or go I'll left. I'll let you know when right. you've been, I'll pull you back. I, he's like, I want you on the edge where the demons live. Yeah. I'll pull you back when I think you've gone too far. That was the coolest damn thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. This is the guy who said it to me, right? I say it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I just said it to him. I was like, hey, man, you I've can't hear that He did. He let time. me put my leash. And, man, I got to go out as far as I freaking could. Yeah. There's a superpower in that. There is. When you know someone's back there that can pull you out when you need to, man. But, I, the, and that's trust. That's, that's trust up and down uh, in, in the relationship, in the, in, the, in the structure, the command structure, that, because you're going to get deployed remotely. And I want to I see how he thinks, how he reacts uh, through this extended time. And let him know my concerns. And same way with, you know, at the time from up above us, the CEO and, uh, you know, the master chief or the XO or ops boss will put put the clamps on the senior leaders in the yes. platoon. Yeah. But you did it brilliantly because you don't know it's coming from that high up, right? And just the way that – because wild ones, you got to let us be wild. Yeah. The way things were working and how hard it was and the lives we had, man, and just to be able to reel us back in like that, that was pretty, I, ma- pretty amazing. What, I was, was, what was some of the highlights of your career in the 80s and 90s? I, I love being a team guy. It, it, going, through, going through training, uh, it was like said, uh, you know, I, every guy, you scrap. I've seen guys that, that were physically gifted, 
Uh, but they'll they'll find a way. They'll get those guys out in the water. I mean, they they oh absolutely instantaneously. You know, I see people uh, you know stuff on our different you know inner you know seals only uh, social media sites talking about you know there's these guys that are the golden runners, the studs that are they're gifted. These guys run like a scalded dog forever. And I wasn't that. I was a goon squad guy. Made the times, but I was a goon squad guy. <laughs> Even when I was making the times, I'd be in the middle of the pack and goon squad starts on Gothro. So, so I'd do what any team guy would do. I started sprinting to get as many guys behind me. You know, eh, what are you doing? You know, yeah, right. <laughs> you got to do that. You got to you got to do it and go back. That hammer me and uh, I. I remember a goon squad uh, from Chief Ray Tellus who would make you laugh while he's hammering you, and that was a key. Those guys are the yeah. How about those them? guys are the best? Yeah. And he told me he goes. So in this goon squad, he he goes. I tell you what, I tell you what, Gautro. He goes, uh, you're doing well. He goes, but I, I'm just going to goon squad you the whole way through first phase because it'd be wrong if I stopped and you didn't get every goon squad because you wouldn't have nothing to talk about. Full benefits. <laughs> you just yeah. want, you want full. I was a goonie too. And so, he, I, you know, I, he, he's like, I'm going to hook you up though. He goes, uh, there's a lot of guys that haven't done a goon squad, and I'd be remiss if I didn't give them a goon squad so they couldn't appreciate. I don't even want to hear from the dudes. Morgan was never a goonie. Oh man. Like he could run his ass off. He called the guys out. He's like, I'll, I'll lie. I'll just pull him back here and hammer him. He goes, here's the deal. You'll get to see it. And he goes, uh, you're not going to leave. No matter what, you better put out. Yeah. And uh, they started the, the, the goon, and uh, the guys asked me, what's going on? I was like, go until you can't go no more. Get up and start it all over. Go some more. Pays to be a winner. Oh, my gosh. But it's, it's good. It's good. It's all stress, and it's in the, in the broader aspect of things, you understand why they do it. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. and you we can sit there and tell these guys that too because we we ran across one of the young pups, uh, seals the other yesterday. Yeah, and they are they're badasses. Oh yeah, I mean they look like badasses. They're they, hard, lean, I smart, mean, professionals. Absolutely, the whole gambit. Shoot can, good, quick reflexes. Everything. Yeah, and good for them. I'm glad they have. They got the the kingdom. Yeah, you ought to see the compound now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing I always said though, yeah, you might be you know faster and smarter. But you ain't as good looking. Shit, what's up? <laughs> and I don't run fast so people can see me. Exactly. I'm a good tracker, so. <laughs> yeah, I can find you. I'll track get, get, get where you need to go, man, because yeah. eventually we'll get there. Oh we got, we got them guys, too. Oh, they they brief runs, and it'd be fun. They briefed the whole pack, uh, you know, the whole team. Uh, we're going to go here, go there. I'm like, wait, hold up my hand. Wait a minute. You only need, like, those three guys there are the only guys you need to brief because everybody else is tracking. Everybody else is tracking those dudes. They're breaking yeah. trail. There's a line. Yeah, there's, there's an absolute wolf pack line from the fastest to the slowest. Yeah, Point same, man all same the way for, back. Same for swims. Same for swims. Yep. Everything we do is is there's a, a pattern to it. I'd, I'd make a point on run swims that when I'd swim fast and uh, get out of the water first, uh, and I'd see you know the you know the guys that are really good runners. I'd see them getting in there. And I'd do one of two things: uh, either get into the water, I'd push them over and throw their fin. Coming out of the water, I'd grab their tennis shoes and, Take shoes. and sling it. Oh and my gosh! As they go to pass me. Uh, I'd grab them and throw them in the bushes. So that same thing in the water. A guy tries to pass you. You you know you strip his mask. Yeah, where are you going? What are you trying to do, yeah, badass? Yeah, get out, get out of the yeah, way. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. They cry foul. And it's like, no, dude, you, you should know. It's because it's a team swim. We're all in there. It's like, man, you're not trying to outdo me in front of the CEO or you the XO or the mask, especially the mask. and warrant officer. The warrant officer is the worst. Right. You get beat by one of them, dude. They, oh man, yeah. But I, I did pull the rope on the O course at Chill Team Two on the Command Master Chief, and he was coming oh, around. Cool. Pardon me? The one over the pool? Uh, no, uh, the one on the Little Creek where it's got the, the big and the little old course that you run around. And uh, we're doing, you know, uh, and he was he was getting ready to lap me. He's yelling at me, you know, get moving, Gothro. And so I, without even, I knew it was his voice. Without even looking back, I pulled the rope up. Oh, my God. And uh, he, he started screaming. I'm like, yeah, uh, <laughs> what oh do you do gosh. now? You know, I knew I was, yeah. So when did, when did you go to Red Cell? After Team 3, uh, I, I got the opportunity to screen for Red Cell, and that was in uh, 89. And that's so a precursor 80, to Damn Nick for that. What is person. Red Cell? Red Cell, 89 to 92, uh, when I was there, started at Damn Neck as an aggressor, uh, basically training department thing. And Marcinko, brilliant man that he is, brilliant, you know, forward thinking, he, everybody should know this, uh, developed, you know, the concept uh, after looking at, at at Delta, as people know, or CAG, to build a counter-terrorist organization that was maritime-based. He needed an, uh, basically uh, an aggressor or red team to go against his guys in the training department, and he realized the value of that is 
this is important uses as well and went up to the Pentagon and it broke off from there uh, and became its own. It fell when I was there underneath NCIS and we'd go test security all around the world. Uh, and that was a very high point for me as a young... You know, How much fun did you have doing that? Oh, my that, God. Man. That was great. That was great. I and mean, it was challenging. It was great. Uh, great people. Great leadership. So you were there in the, like, test phase of it. No, it was it was going. It was it going. going. Marcinko had, had come and gone. Uh, there had been an incident at Seal Beach uh, when they had gone to the... It was on 60 Minutes. They had gone to a security officer's house to... <laughs> abducted guy, uh, knocked on the door. His kid answered the door. They're in bal- balaclavas and, and guns, and, and they had bona fides if they need, if the guy got wigged out. But someone opens your door in balaclavas. Mm-hmm. The guy's teenage son goes, Dad, it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you must be here for my dad. Yeah, pretty much. So he turned around. They had it on film. He, he turned around going, we'll talk later. <laughs> you know, and they pulled him into a hotel, and they, they had that footage on 60 Minutes that – uh. Of the interrogation, and, I remember that. And at the time, you know, you know, the guy afterwards, because we had NCIS agents, they did uh, interviews up and down, going, "Do you want to take charges? Do you feel this? Do you feel that?" And what talk- was that about? Why would they pull him out of the house? Well, it was just it was testing, s- testing security. The idea was you were to act as aggressors that would come in and attack the U.S., whether it be from a you know, just a simple criminal gang to a uh, a transnational organized organization so it wasn't a real like they're pulling him out to put him in jail it was no just it was pull him out to put him through a like interrogation oh like my we went gosh. to his house and snatched him out of his house in front of his kid took him somewhere into a warehouse and interrogated him like he'd been captured sounds like the eddie gallagher case and it, it was it was to to proof security measures we were an outside organization coming in so if yeah. if we worked together the thought was with the navy and it was brilliant by the admiral uh, that, that set it up if you would have your own people do it, they would be they would be kind. It's it's like an IG inspection. I mean, you know, there's stuff. Yeah, we want to help you, but part of the help is we want to we want to get a real ground truth and how good. Yeah. How can you stop? That's it? how you know. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, that was and we we did we did everything and I mean I did stuff. It was it was very cleansing to me. Uh, I did base protests against the Navy. Would have a, would have internal to the team we would have contests who could get the most base protesters which in the core of me i'm yelling these things at the navy and these protests i'm looking at these people doing it going on you know i really don't like these people but i got i got to do this because i got to win against my buddies and and have the best slogans of the most people uh and thank god we had embedded uh undercover ncis uh you know, master arms people, master you know, guys that were reservists that were uh, chiefs of police. Yeah. I did a thing in Charleston where I led a protest to try and get the Navy to, you know, come outside the, basically the base. They did what they were supposed to do where they buttoned up the base, held off the protesters, and then the Charleston police came in. And I was standing on top of, uh, you know, one of the guard shacks with a bullhorn, and the Charleston police were like, that guy, get him now. Oh, my gosh. They begged me and tagged me as fast as you could imagine. Yeah. Threw me in the back of the, the car. We had bona fides. We had credentials. Gave those up. And they're like, oh, so no. So that was your job. Was you were job. doing that because you were told to do it. Yeah. You yeah, were agree. told to yeah. Yeah. And start crap. Yeah. And they had to get these. Like, if you do that and you get in trouble, like, if you join the military, we have a job for you. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, I, I can't make that any more clear. I'm like, if you're getting in trouble for being a wildling, join the military. We got a spot for you. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like uh, the you know in, in its own way, extreme prejudice in a multi movie. Just put discipline in them, yep. feed them, and pay them, and yep. they'll be fine. I, I used to joke with my boss. I mean, how do you how do you write my my evaluation? You know, he he's very good at anti you know U.S. Navy and government slogans. Leads good counter protests. He's a good bank robber. He's a good you know he's a good assassin. I, I, you can't do you it. are and you were i remember when we have those breaks in between everything and you go teach us how to break in hot wire cars i thought that was a that was great yeah we, we're not supposed to learn how to do that well, well I, I mean <laughs> all guys I, mean, I teach my kids that stuff all the time i've done classes for that to guys on the east coast and, and as a professional courtesy going hey if you worked on a farm or you know for for you that's you, right. you taught me all that you people that grew up in new york city this is how you get your transportation right Oh well. my gosh. So when you were at Red Cell, those were the kinds of things you were doing. Were these test run, te- basic 
testing our nation's security. We would go to a region and assault a base. Yeah. Methodical. If and you think you're a badass, we got a crew to test that. Is, does that still exist? Yes, no. but in a different form. Okay. And it, it morphed. Uh, yeah, it grows. It, it grows. I mean, it was uh, uh, it's political hot potato, and it needs a lot of, uh, rightfully so, to do it right, and that's what they turned it into. But it's out there, and, it, and it's being done, rightfully so, because we yeah. still we still have to protect the nation. And I will say this: that every time people follow the rules in place, we were defeated. You know, they followed what's out there, trusted in their training, did what they're supposed to do and trained to do. They were good at defeating us. Yeah. Has it ever gone bad? Uh, there's been close calls. I mean, there's times, uh, there are times literally uh, they've asked me to do stuff, for instance, rob a bank on, on base and said, okay, we want only you, my CEO, the CEO of the base, and the CEO would tell the teller, hand them a bag of cash and say, you know, you're going to have a guy here in five minutes, but hit the alarm, hit the, hit the alarm. So I go through the deal and it was, my skipper told me, hey, look, you know, you got the bona fides, but we can't guarantee this guy, you know, if you get rolled up on, someone's going to pop you. And, uh, oh, there's always that. That's oh my the, gosh, you might get shot, but which you can is, show which, credentials. Which, a, hey, that keeps to. it live. You know what I'm talking about? That, that makes, makes it, that it makes, keeps it freaking live. That when makes they say that because we can get shot anytime in our training. That makes you focus and think yeah. real careful about what you're doing. And guys uh, can drown. Anything yeah. go wrong yeah. with our, our training? But think about that. You you can get shot. Yeah. But if you need to show creds, you can. <laughs> like well, that's you got, you got to read only... the you got to read the situation. You got to yeah. you, you got to read the situation, think through your what ifs, and then you know plan for chance and go go with it. And I was proud to say I was good at it. I'm a marked man, so I can't do that line of work because I'm a marked man. But on the other hand, uh, it helps you plan and it helps you really focus in on on our job as your mission planning and just dealing with chaos and and stress. Going, it's really no different in the broader aspect of thinking what we do uh, in a team and a platoon, yeah, we might get shot there too. Uh, it's the same same, so same can thought philosophy. Can you walk philosophy. us through that bank robbery? I, the particulars were undercover cameras on the whole thing because they had to they had to prove it to learn. They had people stationed undercover radios that were, so to speak, my safe people. I had laid out, this is what I intend to do. This is when I show up, I'll, I'll be doing this. Uh, to, you know, to the the bank uh, at the base, uh, you know, put in, you know, uh, put in a note and then I had, I'm not going to go into de detail on how I stressed, you know, the teller and, and the guy, they were, they were pretty active there too, but they handed me uh, a bag of cash and I joked with my skipper, I go, you know, if they hand me real cash, I may mm. or may not be back, tell you what. <laughs> depending on the amount. Have you ever wished for the perfect combo? We're talking like a zero calorie cheeseburger or something that just sounds way too good to be true. Well, I found just the thing for you and it's looking sharp without sacrificing comfort. Meet Mack Weldon where style meets performance. Their apparel blends classic aesthetics with comfortable fabrics and ooh, it looks sharp. It fits perfect and most of all, it spikes up your confidence. My absolute favorite piece is the True Black Ace Sweatpants. I can't sing their praises enough. They not only look good and feel great, but they can also pass off as normal pants, so I've been rocking them in public and nobody even bats an eye. Literally, every time I've come across an item on Mack Weldon's site, it's been a hit. The boxers, they breathe so well. The crew necks are comfortable and stylish. Just go check out the site and see for yourself. Go head on over to MacWeldon.com and make them yours today. Plus, you can enjoy 20% off your first order with promo code TNQ. That's M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N.com with promo code TNQ. So these, the bank, workers don't know that this they didn't is know. the test. They're the they ones didn't. getting tested. Them okay. them and security. How and security. fast security can so go their flat. Security flat. and the workers of the bank had no idea. Right. There's usually somebody will know, but other than that, you keep it blank that way because what you're looking for is the reaction. And then were there other people in the bank, like civilians in the bank? Uh it was it was a teller window and yeah. They're, 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 you know, I stood in line and 
did my time, got up there, got it, and then it was you know on on my you know course of action exfil, which uh, undisclosed you know worked. It worked, and the Navy then took that on board of let's let's do what we can to mitigate this from ever happening for real. And they took measures, and that was a deal with red cells that you would show a vulnerability, and the Navy would then go, this is a justification for for resources and spending to improve our you know our fence line to improve some sort of security in the teller or re- redo it uh, you know where we can you know have a have a door but you know they have now on banks where you hit a button and you know the trap like a rat you know so how much money did you get away with it was it was it was it was all cut up uh, you know basically newspaper stuff there's no money oh. but it was it was a big bag it yeah, we got a couple places fit my back <laughs> fit my back, backpack that's why i had to do 40 years in the government before yeah. <laughs> paying on it. So oh my gosh serious, by the that way. is crazy but uh, so when you think of that uh morgan and marcus did something similar they didn't actually what, test the school but they went around to our kids school and like thought of ways that were um that needed better security why doesn't our government actually use red cell the concept of that to go in to test the security of all of our public schools i i think you know homeland security has got a huge operation doing that and uh you know the government obviously you know with all its all its assets especially overseas and you know in the in in the conus uh you know as well we have uh a need that they do that and they do it on a regular basis that's why there were some political, you know, feathers got ruffled. Like when you go into a base and things were done and you can reference this in uh, 60 minutes, things were changed after after to preclude it from ever happening again. But they did some very sensitive uh, things that, uh, you know, okay, it happened once, let's, let's, let's have you guys address it. When it wasn't addressed and it was done a second time, careers were ended. And so... Well, that's who gets mad. Yeah. Is when we go in there and we keep pointing out who's doing the, the they're the ones that usually talk all the smack, which we don't care, but it still yeah. pisses everybody else off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm doing it because I want to keep other sailors uh, safe, our nation safe. Uh, and people, I even as a junior sailor, I saw uh, different commands. Uh, we would use tactics that were used by the local, you know, the local factions in different installations in the world. Uh, we would mimic that on the installation. Uh, and they would either say you don't know what you're talking about, uh, blow us off. That happened. That happened to the team before I got there uh, in Greece, and then they showed what could happen. And well, they, as in a brief, uh, secured area said, "Hey, look, this is a vulnerability." They were told, "Yeah, you guys don't know what you're talking about." A month later, the guy in the brief that was saying you don't know what you're talking about was killed in the exact same yeah, manner. Course. Was, was blown up. And then we had other installations that said, yeah, you know, we'll take this and justification for fun, funding. They threw money at it, fixed it, made it made it good. And uh, that's why it had to evolve. It had to evolve at that, you know, at the time it was NCIS and just, you know, it, it has to be on the four-star or greater level mm-hmm. because of sensitivities. That's Political all the thing to do is fight like they did, use it against them. Yeah, yeah. So... That's so cool. Do you think that was the coolest part of your career? That it was hard. It was hard to go to that, but then I knew I had to go back to the teams and continue, uh, continue in the teams. And but it, it was a good skill set, a finishing set. Uh, you know, they sent me to driving school not once, twice, three times. I felt I felt unbelievable. like unbelievable. I felt because like because you failed, or you just no, needed no, that's, more and more that's, training. No, they they Let me tell you something about. They, Some of our schools, you can't believe how much fun they are and what you get to go to. I mean, we are learning stuff. Don't get me wrong. But that's <laughs> the most fun I've ever had. Oh yeah, are those driving schools? Oh yeah. I want to take my kids to them. Bad. Oh, yeah. oh they're, they're. You should join the Navy and try to be a SEAL just to go to those schools. I was like, I, I'll pay you guys. You I'll can, pay you. You can. I, I said the same thing. I was like, man, you can keep my money. You can keep my money for letting me do this. Oh, yeah. they sent me first. You know, certification, State Department driver. Then they sent me the instructor side. Awesome. Yeah, I'll go do the instructor. So you learn the driving from uh, the opposite position in the front seat. Same stuff, which is fun. And then the third time uh, was a basic, well, it was the instructor, but I was supposed to be there to be the the dummy, you know, in the car. You get to do some driving, but be the dummy. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> Dude, imagine me and him in, in a, these junker cars from a junkyard that they made run. Okay, we're on this racetrack, and there's three cars side by side, or right, right beside each other, and then there's three cars in front of them. It's so like a box. And we're sitting there driving down this track full speed, and then they'll be like, hey, you got shot. You're out. And he'd be behind the wheel, and he, and he was leaning on the steering wheel while we're dry, racing. And we would have to pull him into the back seat while the other guy's trying to get the steering wheel. Yeah. Meanwhile, the other guys in the other cars are shooting at us. With paintball guns yeah. and kicking the door and oh spitting at you, yeah. I never laughed so hard in my you're, entire life learning how to do that. You're trying to you're trying to brace yourself so you're not driving around in the car, you, foot and hands, yeah, move guys. Uh, oh, oh my it's, god, it's fun. It's intense and oh, that was the most. It's a day at Malibu. Like if you ever want to go race cars, oh yeah, this what you think that would be like is that school. That school was very. That's the best cool. way I can say it. What you think the TV version of that would look like was that. That's that's, that's exactly it. And I tell you what, you can, you have a smile like like this. this. You can't believe. It. I mean, hung over sometimes, just or what it beat up. It doesn't matter. Does anyone get really hurt in the driving school? We've been we, lucky. Uh, Mojo flipped that up armored suburban that one time. Yeah. But did he get hurt? Hell no, you can't hurt him, dude. He can't. Uh, you, he can't you have no special him. harnesses. These are just cars. It's just cars. And you, you got your three point belt on and. <laughs> Yeah. If you even got it on. Yeah. I think you're just having so much fun you don't get hurt. Yeah. Like I said, if when you're, you're laughing so hard, you can't get hurt. When you're doing the instructor and you got to do it from the opposite side, you can't have a belt on because you got to move have over. Belt on. You got to get over there. And uh, I mean, guys yeah. will pull off the, damn, excuse me, throwing stuff out of the car at other people, trying to run them off the road. Any, and we just, yeah. It's oh, unbelievable. It's, it was fun. It was, it was, it was fun. It was good. It was a good time. It was a finishing school then to prepare me to go back into the platoons. Told myself I will teach guys these skill sets. Mm hmm. Teach them how to think out of the box, as I've been told. Uh, I'll, I'll circle back to that. That it's it's just so dang fun to, and you get you get guys that are with you, and they they fire you up with new ideas, and they're they're talented, and you see where that goes, and it's like it's when it's when they get fired up. Okay. That, that's what happened. That, that's a great point. Yeah, it's like guys will be guys, but when you see them get fired up in the way they act when we're doing something like that, is yeah. is the real treat. You know, oh yeah. Dude, look at this, we get so what here. year did you leave Red Cell? Ninety two is when it uh. uh Basically, was a decommission. They broke it apart, sent parts of it to NCIS, other parts of it to other other spots, and it recoagulated later on uh, to where it is now uh, as a joint command as it should be. Wouldn't that be around the Gulf War? Yes, I was I was there at Red Cell uh, when the Gulf War went down. I taught guys over at the East Coast SEAL teams, uh, hot wiring. And other things to do on the vehicles. Hey, if you guys need this, this is what you need for a kit. This is how you do it. As we say in a, you know, in a farm aspect, this is how you start the tractor. Or you know, in a city, this is how you acquire transportation, so you don't have to do the Bravo Two Zero across the desert. You know, load your buddies and drive what you can. Uh, but uh, I couldn't get orders out of the team. I tried to get over to the team when it went down. Frustrating for me. You know, in the in the out cycle. Uh, not to get out of there and but it was also uh words of wisdom from a vietnam mentor of mine said hey just train don't chase it whatever means you'll never catch it yeah you'll never catch it and he goes just train be prepared pass on you don't know what your your part is but be ready and pass on what you know so don't be that guy uh, you always hear that yeah don't be that guy that has the only information pass it on to everybody so everybody knows yeah you know, so there's a couple of those phrases that you hear no matter where you're at, what what coast or what team, and that's one of them. At, it, at what point did you go to SDV? So uh, from there, I went to SEAL Team Two. Uh, well, actually, I went to DLI uh, Spanish, and then went down to Panama. Uh, did a tour down at the unit overseas. My mentor told me that's a thing you need to do. Do your teams, then go do a unit, learn how the how how it works and why it works from the support level and then go back and engage in the leadership. So from Panama, I went to SEAL Team 2, uh, did a, my Bosnia deployment as a JCO, Joint Commission Observer, hunting uh, war criminals. Uh, selected, they, they wanted senior season guys and put us in houses with, uh, you know, SF folks. Uh, and I was close to Sar Sarajevo in the in town of Doboy. How long were you over there? Uh, that was six months, full yeah, six, six months. months. Right. So that that was unique. And then uh, did my LPO slot at SEAL Team Two and promoted out of that to Chief. I was told I wanted I was teaching combat swimmer at SEAL Team Two. Uh, had taught the combat swimmer instructor course uh, to 
To go to SEAL Team 2 and teach combat swimmer at that time, you had to go through the instructor course. And it was taught by uh, one of two legends of combat swimmer, Chuck Williams or uh, Aaron Griffin. And I, I went through Aaron's course, and it was a great course with uh, great, great guys. There are, a couple guys are still active out there. But uh, it was funny, teams being the teams, when, when I got done, Chuck came back and said, oh, your, your shirt doesn't doesn't hold any weight until you and I dive together and do a dive and I see you dive. <laughs> Did the dive. He's like, nah, you're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> see, most everybody thinks regular scuba diving when we talk about this. Like when we say those words, that's what they're thinking. They're not thinking, they don't have any idea what we're talking about. This is, uh, the, you know, our our work with our NATO allies, in particular uh, the comp swimmers, the Germans, uh, the Commando Uber, the French, uh, and our UK partners. Uh, they're have a, a different sort of approach in how we do the same business. And they helped uh, the SEAL teams, and this is well known, in, in the late 70s, uh, early 80s, bring our game up. You know, say, hey, you know, these this is some equipment, some training you guys need to look at and a focus you need to take, which, once again, being a, an allied nation, it, it did bring us up and it gave us a different focus. And difference between combat swimmer, no bubbles, uh, you worked all the issues on a, on a rebreather. Uh, you don't want to be seen. You don't want to have bubbles come up because that attracts. We tr I trained more hard or harder doing that yeah. than any other uh, skill set we had. It is. And it's, I think. More time, more effort, attention to detail, uh, all of that. To be, in, to be in the water where we were sneaking up on fish, tapping them on the back, or if something saw us in the water, it would just be like, that belongs here. Yeah. Yeah, that that kind of mentality. Just knowing how vulnerable you are in that environment, whereas you know, land warfare, you know, there's, you know, you have you you have you have quite the the arsenal you can draw upon. Whether it be you know it might be a crew served weapon of some sort, you know, a saw, or it might be your your M4, uh, and then you get your buddies with you. But when you're in the water, it's a whole different vulnerability. Oh, not top of the food chain. Yeah, and once once one guy is discovered, then it's on like Donkey Kong for any anybody else that's in that water near that so uh, and it's good it's it's very challenging i loved it uh wanted to go at the time cross compound to stv2 you know to get my chief's slot and uh was told yeah they're they're overmanned but hey stv1 is open and i knew that knew the crew out there and said yeah absolutely you go to hawaii you, you know because they had given me the alternate of going to uh uh yuma do you know be a free fall instructor. Go, well, Jumper. Uh, let me let me think about this for a second. Go to the desert. Or go to Hawaii. Skydive <laughs> or go to Hawaii and scuba dive. Basically, you know, dive. I'll go to Hawaii. I want y'all to think about that. Those are our job descriptions. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't even I didn't even know what special deliveries was. Matter of fact, I'll say this into the open for the first time. I've never said this before, but and you can walk up to any guy in the SEAL teams, including our SEAL Team Six guys, and say, ask them what the hardest team is in its special deliveries. It's Quite hard. Simple. You, when you say doing a long dive, I thought a long dive was a you know a couple hours on a, on a rebreather, and it's far no, beyond, no far beyond that in the STV. And the you, look on their faces when you say that we're from there, yeah, especially back in them days, people were like, "What? Why would you? How, what happened?" <laughs> what, what What got me interested in that was the next logical work extension of the underwater realm, but the technology had changed from. Uh, from the, the original boat when I first came in the teams to at that point in my career, it was a Mod 1 that we had. Uh, and it was a much, the, the Mod 1 is a much more capable boat than the original, just like the current boat is uh, the same sort of leap forward in technology. And yeah, I was fired up to get out there, good good leadership crew, and went through training, and that's when first met. That's when we met. That's, that's we just put on Chief. I just put on chief, and I, I uh, you know, evaluated the guys that were going out to the team, and and looked at uh, the command master chief, and said, "There's this guy. I need a corpsman. This guy, give him to me. Otherwise, I'm going to pull the dirt I have on you." I didn't even know who you were when I was coming down. I was we were in the chow hall, yeah, and I, I could just see your anchors, you know, in that trident. You were in uniform, so I just set my. He was had his head down. I put my tray down, and I was like, "Chief," uh, and I introduced myself. Obviously, I'm still brand new. He's like, oh, you're one of mine. And that was it. Mm -hmm. Is that how started. you remember it? It is. It, and see, that's a whole, that's also a subtlety of the time change now. 
as we go through the pipeline in training, and literally his 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 Trident Award was the last it was the last one the last one awarded by the teams. Before then, you would do your you do your SQT. Uh, when I did it, it was done internally by uh, SEAL Team Three and the cadre. They got smart and said, "Wow, you know, let's you know just pull resources and we'll do a West Coast, East Coast, did an East Coast thing." And then you'll do your board review in front of your team, and then decide, you know, in front of all the chiefs. Yeah, the murder, you know, the murder board questions the and the murder board. They'll decide whether you get your trident, and uh, that uh, literally when he showed up, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a stiff learning process along the way. You know, as a chief's mess would run these guys through, make sure they ensured the training was conducted, they did it appropriately, and then we put them through. Well, I was nervous. I was scared actually when that one. Because it was the last one. You walk into this room, this huge room, and there's a huge horseshoe table, and then all the chiefs are in there, all the way up to the top match chief. And then the questions vary from – and remember, you're standing right in the middle of them, and they're going, so tell me uh, when exactly – what date did, were the SEAL teams founded, who founded them, who was first, and then they'll start asking about missions. And then the next one will go, okay, so if I'm diving at this, de at this depth for this amount of time. Yeah. I mean, all these technical questions, then I'll switch over to weapons. And you'll have this weapons master chief there who knows every weapon system, and he'll ask you this, this, this detailed question on a firing pin assembly or something like that. And then the next year we go, so let me ask you a question. If you saw me going down the boardwalk in a pair of roller stakes and a Speedo with a bong just ripping it down, what would you, what would you say to me? And I'll never forget one guy goes, well, man, if that's how you want to drink beer, bro, that's all. That's fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> and he passed him. He was yeah. like, bro, if you can yeah. think of that that fast. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Amen. And I mean, if you can make the Chiefs laugh, that was a thing. If yeah. you can make them laugh. Because <laughs> Chiefs don't laugh. They're yeah. Especially the Chiefs. The same Chiefs, the yeah. Chief. But the Chiefs in and don't laugh at nothing. And I mean, he hit him with that. And I, I mean, What did you say? <laughs> oh, I don't even, my questions were, they were pretty, yeah, I was the last, I was the longest one too. It was three and a half years, I think. Yeah. I mean, they started feeling sorry for me. I'd been in the, I got lost in the pipeline when they sent me to the army. You literally, you literally were the person. And after, you know, going back to uh, when you graduated and he got to meet Admiral Olson, and, and yeah. it was the, the instructors asked you, would you get over on the training cadre? Morgan doing a day of training for him. Next thing you know, he's in front of the director of training. Tell him what you said. I did, yeah. Told, I had an interesting career, man. It, so did you know that being his chief, like had he already earned a reputation that? I, oh, I knew he was a, a, a good performer. I had heard about that, and I was like, I'm squared away. I was like, I he's squared away. I'm like, oh, that's good. Wild as shit, but I, I was I'm, squared I'm, away. I'm like, he's thinking out of the box. They both are. I like that. I like that, and we can use that, and we can shape that. And uh, but it came down to so uh, when we awarded the trident. Uh, to him, I read him warrior poetry. I read him a uh, Kipling poem, uh, The Thousand Man, great poem uh, to go back and read. But after that, Admiral Olson looked at it, and you had gone through and had another discussion with them. I believe that he asked you, you know, what you thought about it. Your contemporaries get out of training, SQT, and within a year they had a trident. And because he had gone 18 Delta as, as a corpsman, he had a two year slag time where and the SDV route and through. the SDV on top of that almost three years before he got his trident and his his classmates have been having it and that's when uh, they'd already been on deployment yeah and his 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 classmates been on deployment and uh, the admiral said we're going to change this and he he went to uh, leadership and yeah. said this is what we'll do and they changed it to what it is now where you go through and you're awarded your trident by the time uh, you you finish the SQT pipeline prior to going to the team. Mm -hmm. So you show up with a Trident and it's not, uh, you know. And you're not allowed to touch a Trident, go near one. I'm talking for two and a half, three extra years I was sitting there going through this. Tough I just made it sweeter. The music was so sweet when they pinned that Trident because I got my blood wings. I mean, they punched that sucker right. He called all hands. We They opened up the door. The entire team gets Who in line. It? Everybody in the team. Everybody. Everybody in the team, and then you wear it all night at the bar, kind of this. So idea. this is at SDV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So you were there when he got his trident. I was there. Yeah. As oh, I, yeah. As yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. As I, on me. as I said, I read the thou <laughs> thousand man. So that was at the moment of yep. him getting his trident. Yep. Yeah, yep. cool. And he reenlisted me when, on the surfboard. We were doing, we were surfing when I reenlisted. Yep. Aww, I yep. love that. 
Yeah, that was awesome. How about that for a redneck story? I really was that in Hawaii? in Hawaii. In Hawaii, yeah. Oh, how cool! Paddle out. That's part of our Steve, P- Wednesday we need to go PT. Back to Hawaii, babe. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's the best time. There I was, love Hawaii. It was it was it was beautiful. There's lots of fun and it's such a beautiful thing. And honestly, out of the teams that had the hardest run swim I've ever done, you swim around Fort Island. We're the only people allowed in that harbor. That's where Pearl Harbor went down. That movie I'll see Pearl Harbor, the island we're talking about is that was we, we would swim around that and the battles go ahead. Yeah, you're on the outside of Arizona. You the swim, battleships are there. And we're the only ones allowed in the water. Outside of Missouri, inside of Utah, which inside is, of Utah. Which is a memorial as well. How cool was that? And when we got to dive those yeah. couple times, yeah, bro, yeah. that was some of the coolest. On chills. top of the water, you, I got chills right now. Yeah, because you can't see it from top of. I'm getting more chills, man, from the top of the water. But as soon as they let us go subsurface, yeah, and you could see, we're the only ones allowed in there. Yeah, other than other than the, other than the divers and the, the EPA, park. yeah, then yeah. guys, talk about a yeah. humbling experience, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a different place too. And uh, as John Jones will tell you, there's he'll never forgive me for this, but I'll say this. So we were doing a dive one night. You were in the boat with them. Boat had issues. We surfaced it. I'm on the surface looking in the water with the the lights in the water. So lights attract little fish. Little fish attract bigger fish. West Lock in Hawaii. I still hold this one against you, I think. Is is a hammerhead <laughs> breeding ground. It's not funny. He knows I'm terrified of sharks too, man. And I had one chasing me. Oh yeah. Okay, so I wasn't I was out in the water doing all this stuff with JJ. I still hold this one against you. And there's a shark chasing me. It was pacing me, a hammerhead. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't know it. And he, he waited and finally he brought me up and he's like Hey, there's a shark there's behind a shark you. Yeah. Chasing you. I was like that was just one of the times. <laughs> I, my I, mom made me so watch Jaws. I, I never wanted to look into the water column at night because my fears would be realized. Oh, I, what's this, that shadow? That's, okay, so the scariest part was he, he pulled me up on purpose because I had to swim back down through it. Oh yeah. Normally, if I'd have stayed on the bottom, it would have been fine. But. <laughs> oh, so I my gosh. That. But that was funny. Uncle in the gray suit. Yeah, were we were you there, there when he got the O2 embolism or whatever it's called? Yeah. 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 yeah we've, we've, we've had some fun dives. Uh, you know, when I got out of STV... Uh, and, and we formed up. Uh, we had some guys that were uh, known pilots, you know, uh, older guys in the platoon that had done a platoon already. This was their reload. Then we had the, the young guns. I said, hey, we need we need to have a top gun trophy, and we'll set up dive teams, you know, pilot, navigator, pilot, navigator, set up the criteria and do a dive off. And challenging. It just makes you learn the, the skill set. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, one of the best natural pilots out there. I thought that was a curse in the beginning. You? Yeah. Oh well. I can fly. Yeah, you could. You could. You could you I can definitely fly. Why don't and, you try to fly a plane? And the, somebody asked me that today. I, I asked him that this me about that today, and last week again with it. Yeah, I can fly. Yeah, he he he's, he's a cool handler. I don't like saying it because I have to do it so much. <laughs> but um, that was the reason why they passed me up with JJ for sure. Yeah. What was JJ's job? He was my navigator. Yeah. He just pointed where he wanted to go. He was a commanding officer, and uh, he. We're great partners. We're we're great partners. When um, Marcus uh, beat him in the ring. No, that was we were we were younger kids when that happened. That's your favorite story. I love that. I I freaking love that story. I wish there was a like a mock up remake, like a cartoon. Everyone was there. He he wasn't there for that. We had we had good platoon drills where we'd get out and beat on. Okay, so we did do that. That's when the UFC started coming online. So we were the first ones to get the professional fighters to come into the in the highway, and the whole team would fight. Oh you gosh. could get into the ring with the with the XO. The Remember XO. when Rob punched the XO? And, I mean, oh, they got after broke it. his nose. Broke his nose. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Gosh. Oh, and, the only time you could ever hit an officer. Oh, and shall I say, you know, uh, young guys, you know, it's free free shot at free shot free yeah. shot How at great your leadership. Was that command? And you know, uh, your leadership. You know, <laughs> having the you know me with my peers, and we're having <laughs> our discussions on the mat. It's good. It's, Everybody started getting hurt real bad. Is what was going down? Remember? Yeah. So many guys. Have like, they put a stop to that? Then? Well, they changed it. We, well, they, in they, the beginning, it was a free like we would fight. Yeah, it was an actual. It was an actual, it was an actual fight. It was an actual. Oh my gosh! It was organized chaos. Yeah, we're not, that's exactly what it was. Were this, you you gotta understand, man. This is like right after nine eleven, or, or as I like to say, Catholic school recess. Yeah, it's Catholic school. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you want to know what the ultimate game changer for business is? And it's actually one of the things that's been our ace in the hole here at the TNQ online shop for years. It's called Shopify. Shopify isn't just a platform. 
It's the turbo boost behind countless successful businesses worldwide and is probably one of the bigger reasons they can run so smoothly. Whether you're just dipping your toes into e-commerce for the first time, expanding into brick and mortar stores, or you're celebrating your sweet $1 million milestone, Shopify has your back every step of the way. From selling trendy t-shirts to crushing it in the service industry, Shopify has you covered with its flexible platform and seamless POS system. But what really sets Shopify apart? Well, their checkout is basically the LeBron James of the internet, boosting sales by 36% compared to other platforms. I mean, how crazy is that? And here is the cherry on top, Shopify magic. Yeah, it's real. This AI-powered assistant is my personal favorite of all the features, and it streamlines the selling process, saving your precious time and countless headaches. Are you ready to level up your business game? Score a $1 per month trial at shopify.com slash TNQ because when it comes to growth, Shopify is your slam dunk. That's shopify.com slash TNQ. Were you there when half Light got shot? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Do y'all want to tell that story? So I had just gotten back from sniper school, and the the, the platoon was doing. They were out in the in the jungle, in Hawaii, doing some live fire training, and they needed a, a medic. So I had just gotten sent out there, and I was at the base of the hill, and they were up in the mountains doing the the live fire, and I got a call on the radio. And I remember when I showed up there, I thought it was a drill. I didn't think it was real. Yeah, it was live. It was live. He had really been shot. And, uh, what threw me off was when my leadership was was there from the CEO, the Master Chief, and Warrant were all there. Yeah, all, yeah there we was, were all, I don't know why either, but it, they were all standing there. The ghetto was there with their arms crossed with this just stoic look on their face. Yeah. And you were there? Yes. And, and like, it, you know, when normally someone gets shot, this is how cool SEALs are. Like, they're just kind of looking at me like, you're going to do your job or what? <laughs> Not, yeah. hey, go, or, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> Corman up. Corman up, that's all I said. And then they just got out of my way. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember he was laying there, and I, <clears throat> Corey had his hand over his chest, and I was like, all right, let me see what I got. And there was just a bubble of blood on his chest, and I went to wipe it off. I was like, oh, that's nice. I it was fake. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. And it came back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then I looked up at them, and I was like, what? This you went real? to work. You went to work. Yeah, you, I went to work immediately. You, went to, you snapped right, yeah, right in. If something happens when the blood hits me, uh, trigger, I go into that alternate mode. That was it. And it, it was on, and you were on a right. machine. And you were a mach- yeah. yeah, you saved him. You saved him. <laughs> had he not had that intense uh, trained care of the 18 Delta, I mean, okay, once so again, that was it, the- it solidified my position, why I, why I had him. And I loved being a medic. Like yeah. I, I want to be a doctor. I love I, I, that. That part was really, I can get in. I get into that. Yeah. What's really cool is seeing half now with his his family, his yep. kids, and everything, and him and his family being able to get together with us and our family. I just think that's yeah. one of the yeah. neatest stories that Marcus yeah. and him had that interaction when they were twenty years old or whatever they were. God, he's yeah. brand and, new. He's a brand new kid. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that's one of the most incredible stories that Marcus actually saved this guy's life yeah. in a training accident uh, when he got shot by a live round. Yeah. Um, okay, what about, do you want to go into your experience from Red Wing? What you, your side of it, where you were and all of that? At Red Wing, uh, I had left Hawaii in my next duty station. Uh, I'd, I'd gone through a divorce in Hawaii, uh, in our platoon. And my kids were up in Oregon, and I wanted to take a tour on the West Coast. And they said, hey, there's an opening, Group 3, Ops Department. And so I, I took the billet out there. It was, it was nice. Uh, but while I was there, uh, you know, I turned over uh, Marcus to Dan Healy, uh, the new Alpha platoon. We were the old Alpha platoon. Uh, God, I miss that man. I miss him. We got uh, all, we, we, yeah. yeah, all the guys, all the guys. And uh, yeah, Dan loved. I'm, I'd met Dan at SEAL Team Two before I'd gone STV, and uh, 
great man. Uh, <laughs> just just a huge, huge character of a person. He was supposed to relieve me at, at Group 3. He was literally, I pinned on his anchor, pinned on his scene chief anchor, and then he was supposed to take my spot uh, when it went down. So the Admiral, when the, the call went down, the Admiral got the call uh, and knew that news media was descending upon families, and, and not in a good fashion. I'm not a fan of national news media, most outlets, like 99.9% of them, because in our business, we don't talk openly about operations, especially ongoing operations. So what they hear and pass is generally hearsay. The Admiral saw what was going on, called the Commodore uh, at the time, Tom Carlson, mm-hmm. and said, get people out to the houses to sit with them. And we knew ex- expressly, we said, uh, you know, John was working over next door to us and said we got to grab we got to grab Morgan and we're either gonna we're either gonna grab him and and he's gonna go or he's gonna go if you know what I mean so it's like no we're gonna get him we'll go uh drove out uh we deterred the the Navy Keiko team who was doing their official notification you know got the number headed them off at the pass and said look I understand do your notification we'll talk first because you know talking with Morgan uh knowing what was out at the ranch and thank God he drove because driving out there at night, you know, I'm, I'm glad. Out there, yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, you don't accidentally find my place. No. <laughs> no. I was like, are you sure this is the right way? <laughs> right. I'm like, hey, man, is it like, safe you, out here? You know, you know, I'm not worried about getting jumped or robbed. I'm just worried about being out here in nowhere. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so we uh, headed off to the Navy guys and said, look, uh, we'll make the first, you know, calm the crowd down because we had heard there was, there was quite a large uh, – crowd out there supporting the family and that's when i got out there got out of the car and said look you know they they see the guys in in the suit start getting out of the car i'm like everybody just shut up this is not what you think it is he is missing and missing only because everyone knows what that means when them dudes jump out of the car in your front yard yeah yeah. Every mother knows what that means. Oh, you can you, you can hear the gasps. Yeah, everybody knows when you see that detail when them guys in those type of uniforms getting out a certain way. Yeah, and, what that means. And you know, obviously Morgan's like, hey, everybody, it's me. It's like because we're not in uniform, you know, he's missing. Until you can prove otherwise, we know it's not, and we know him. And yeah, he's just missing. And don't you know? I told people, and you know, you, you annotated that. Don't listen to the media. They don't know what they're talking about. Uh, second and third hand, just you know, make you know, make no impression from what they know. The reason the admiral sent us is he gets a call from Afghanistan. He calls us, and we, you know, we tell tell you what's going on, and that's what he wanted. And God bless the admiral for being proactive in that. And which admiral was that? That was Admiral uh, uh, Joe McGuire. Oh, yeah, sent us out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone knows who he is. Yeah, we love Admiral. Oh, he's yeah, he's, dude. Yeah, I was lucky. I was lucky uh, when I left. When I left Warcom, I you know over my combined time there, uh, I'd worked for ten admirals: it's McGuire, Kernan. Uh, oh, you had all of them. Yeah, and uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. We've had some great ones. Oh yeah, Pibus. Yeah, Pibus. Great guy, man. Green. We're talking about admirals too. You don't say anything. Yeah, nice or bad, actually, about admirals. Do you? <laughs> now, have, now that I'm talking about it openly, you don't ever, you just don't even talk about them. Actually, you know, Thank you I, don't even say they're nice. I don't even think you should say they're nice. And they'll be like, "You think I'm nice?" <laughs> like next time I run into Admiral, I don't even call him by the first. It's Admiral. Yes, you think I'm nice? Huh? I've, I've had the Admiral say, "Hey, you know, Chris, you know, yeah, you know, I've I've had Admiral McCraven say, "Hey, Chris, you know, call me Bill," and I was like, "Yes, Admiral, yeah. sir." Yeah. <laughs> That doesn't even sound right coming out of your mouth, I'm man. Like, what are you well, talking what are you about? Thinking? No, 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 yeah. sir. You have, you have Admiral Hardwood the other day, man. I was trying to say something to him, and I can't even. He didn't come out right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he was a class. He was a class ahead of me. He's I like, mean, I. You, you like, know, Chris, you know me. Yes, Admiral. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. There's just I don't know what whatever that is. Kernan, when I did my in brief, you do the in brief. Love that man, dude. I don't say, put that out, but don't don't put that out. Oh, man, great gosh. dude, but still, Kernan. Okay. It, I laugh my I laugh my ass off. He goes, you know, one on one. You know, I'm here to run the SV program. He goes, uh, well, Master Chief, you got two stars. I got two stars. You know the deal. Just you know, don't screw it up. Call me if you need any help. <laughs> Roger that, sir. Your star is a little bit different than mine, but. As yeah, the, the, those simple like, hey, you know, most cons- behave. Yep, don't okay. kill anybody. He screw it calls up. you. He's so Admiral McGuire. His he's using you as a mediator to the family. Mm-hmm. So you've got the phone. 
that only picks up in one part of the property out in the open, out out by the guest house, mm-hmm. out in the open inside of people. Oh, this is before cell phones were really good and working. And yeah, yeah, coverage. That, literally, that was the only spot, and uh, we would have an arranged call on given daily updates. So I'd you know get the change, no change, still no change. Uh, we still have you know we still have a high you know positive feeling on the probability you know that he's still there and still good, and that got. You know, as as the days went on, you know that uh, people start checking it out, and I'm I'm serious. I know him, and, and the coolest thing to me is, you know, you know Morgan. Morgan, what do you think? He goes, no, I, I'd know. I go, I'd know too. Uh, in the aspect of, there ain't no putting or stopping him. I go, mm-hmm. and, and that's why you know I told your mom uh, when she had a, a slight moment of doubt. I said, I know him. He's he will not stop until you put a hand on him, and it's. Either you know he's breathing or not. I go. We we're going that distance. That's what we're going to do. And I don't I don't doubt that we're going to find him. We're going to find him. And he's out there. And it, I tell you, you could have heard the cheer go up when we did get the call. We brought your mom in, uh, Morgan in, and uh, gave her the word. By that time, they had sent us out a secure phone uh, in the house uh, so we could plug. Mom in. and my dad love that. Yeah. <laughs> I know my old man. I know he loved having that secure, like a bad phone. Oh, it was <laughs> only only goes to only the president and the admiral. Was oh yeah, on it. it had it had the full on yeah. the bat key. It'd have to yeah, activate. Yeah, of course. I'm sure he dug that man. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> oh, it was it was it was. Hello, this is David. When that's how you die. You know, uh, I you know when when I got when I got the word and I heard it, it was it was just such a weight of joy of relief. Prayers answered. That happened. I'm, you know, I was, I was overwhelmed, and you know, I didn't, I, you know, I, I didn't jump for joy. I've been being stoic the whole time for everybody. But I heard you did that. For me, I mm-hmm. head down and I was praying <laughs> and thanking God, thanking God for this, is what I was doing. I, you, I heard the story. I want to hear it. And that, that was it. No, and I, I head down and I was like, and everybody thought I was dead. Yeah, they they looked down and you know, I got emotion. I said he's you know, I I said you got to give thanks to God. I gave my thanks. Head up, he's alive. Yeah. They found him. Morgan when Morgan sits there and tells the story. He's like, man, the son of a gun got the breath, got that great news, and he dropped his head and like a relief. But everyone thought it was the opposite of oh that. Oh my god! So everybody's like, what? And my mom almost fainted, and then he goes, he yeah. made it. I feel I, I, that's I, what he does. That don't let him fool you. <laughs> That's what he does. We talked about this earlier. I feel I feel bad if anybody took that wrong. I, I, no, See? no, no, no meaning to do that. Honestly, I mean, if it presents to a team guy, they're going to use especially a chief. Like he had an opportunity to hang people out for a little bit. He freaking do it, man. <laughs> oh no, oh no. I I fear your mom. <laughs> I still fear that woman too. And uh, I tell oh you what, gosh. though, uh, hey, you know, I tell you what, I think Morgan's still got an answer for making that chaplain use a push lawnmower. The, the lawnmower, heat, yeah. Mow, mow I heard lawn. about that too. That, was, <laughs> that made it to me. They had the preacher out there mowing the yard with a push mower. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. But uh, no, it's 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 it, it was a extremely uh, positive and uplifting time because out here, the one thing I saw is community and community of people coming, you know, to the the house to uh, you know, bring food, do chores, and and do stuff. That was the craziest part. The food kept showing up. Oh my god! And and you don't you don't see. Uh, like I said, when we're doing our stuff and we're at work, you, you don't see what's around you. you. You build a bond with the guys, and doing that, you get to see. I, I, I met I met your cast of characters out here. How about my crew, huh? Oh, yeah. That's There's great. something. They're that's, the best. Yeah. I tell you what. I, <laughs> the, see him here, him back there laughing? They're the best, man. Oh, yeah. I tell you what. Uh, they had a blow-up. Uh, Rooney brought a blow-up pool, and him and I jumped in it. And you can imagine him and I in there in one pool, and that was about They're it. They're the best. I get more people coming from the teams and every other state come here just to see it. They'll come and visit them when I'm not even here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is. They'll the just come see my friends. I'm like, wait a minute, oh, yeah. you're supposed to be my friend. Oh, yeah. Like, no. It's your the better. weirdest thing to see team guys in Huntsville, like hanging out with Marcus's crew, and we'll run up on them sometimes. And I'm like, how are you, yeah. what what are you doing? here visiting? Them? They are so awesome. They wouldn't even call me. Why yeah. don't you even call me? <laughs> Well, we buddied up with so-and-so. I'm like, he's great. I know, but still. Yeah. There's... It's so weird how many friendships happened during that time. Yeah. And it's been so long. I mean, those are yeah. solidified I, friendships now. I love those guys to this day. 
I yeah, love them all. Love them all. They're awesome. My Can't gosh. thank them enough. No, I got lucky. I was, I was blessed coming up with 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 them, that crew. Now I did. I we, we we've told the story before. Uh, so found out you're all right. We reset uh, to California and came back when you, you you came back. And when we came back, uh, I get I get the call on the phone, and it's uh, assistant to Vice President, uh, you know Bush forty one. Mm. You know, the president would like to talk to the family. Uh, you know, at the time as a senior chief, senior chief, I understand you're you're the one focal point, which we had made that, so the family wouldn't get bombarded. So it's a hold one, I had to go ask, hey, you guys want to take a phone call from them? Yeah, put them on the house phone. Yeah, you know, because we obviously don't want to stand out in the yard. So, so yeah, they, they would like to talk to you, and uh, you know, here's the number, uh, dial the house phone, and you guys made the call, and uh, I was giggling, just thinking. Okay. Going here's a man, free leader of the world, having to go. They're through. great. They are. He he called me a few times at the house. I remember one time I was eating lunch. My mom had just made me something to eat. I think I just got out of the hospital. He called the house through the. I'm pretty sure it was on Air Force One. They're trying to patch him through. And mom's like, he's eating right now. Kevin, call back. <laughs> <laughs> That's just said to the assistant because you only yeah. have that one phone in the house. Yeah, she yeah. did that. Oh my Because I remember I was like, Ma, who's that? It's like a. Said it was the president. I was like, "Oh my god!" I told him you were eating lunch, and I was that was like it was eating celery or something. You know what I mean? Something insignificant. <laughs> yeah. And some hummus. Yeah. He's trying to patch me back up. I'm like, I need. Is he gonna call back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Oh my yeah, god. She did that. She didn't care. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Then when we went up there to D.C. to visit him in, in at the White House, she just she barnstormed him. I, she, I, she didn't care. I bet you he was laughing though. He understood. It. Yeah. She said she. He said that. He's like, I love when Texans come in. Yeah. <laughs> I like well, my my mother's a real one. Yep. Oh so, my so. gosh, that is so I, funny. Yeah. I can yeah. see her doing that right now. I love this state. Amen. I love the people of this state. It's man, I tell you what, it rejuvenated me uh, in in the midst of all the the sadness of that moment. And uh, there were moments after that, obviously, you know, as uh, Russ guys came back, but it was awesome. It was awesome and just heart lifting. And then uh, when I met you, Mel, I'll mm-hmm. say it. I'll say it again loud. Uh, Thank you for coming into his life and bringing the light and and love back into his eyes. I tell you what, you know, it, it, I mean, that's what we do. What we do is we love our country. We chose this path to be frogmen, uh, but it's for family. It's for country, uh, but family, you know, and your loved ones. Let's dive into the world of life insurance. I know, not the most thrilling topic, but it is crucial to start early because rates only go up the older we get. Policy Genius is a game changer in the world of life insurance. With Policy Genius, you can compare top companies and get expert guidance, ensuring that your family's financial needs are always covered, whether it's mortgages, credit cards, or college costs. Personally, having life insurance really brings me the peace of mind in knowing that my loved ones are always going to be protected. And with Policy Genius, finding the right policy is so simple. You can find life insurance policies starting at just $292 a year for up to $1 million in coverage. Plus, some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Don't wait. Go head on over to policygenius.com for free quotes and secure your family's future today. That's policygenius.com. And uh, we, you know, we bring out a lot of love and a lot of, you know, fun while we do it. And hopefully don't have to experience some of the losses that we have. But, and we do like to have fun when we can. We do. There's something in me that that it'll show. It's like, hey, you can't mess that one up. Yeah. No, like, don't. No. It's few and far between, but when... when <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a radar that goes off when I'm about to do something dumb. Like, we don't do anything dumb with that one. Yeah. and, and, and when That's I, how I know she's, I'm supposed to be with her. Yeah. And, and it's enjoying life. And that's part of being in the teams is... You got you, you got to pass on your passion while you wanted to be a team guy. I mean, you was seeing the guys in Apollo, and then learning about seals and going out and doing fun stuff with guys, challenging stuff with great guys, uh, and just that camaraderie and that that esprit de corps and the competition that you naturally have, whatever it is. And 
just a great group of guys, and you're happy to go to work. I mean, there are times that, oh, yeah, this sucks. Like, uh, Oh, sure, but, I mean, that, it's a different that a different kind of definition with that. You said that perfectly. He's like, hey, I want to go do this situation. Who would you like to have with you? i like to have those guys, and we get the opportunity to do that. Yeah, yeah. And it's what happens in those moments, and it's people's reactions in those moments that are, that's absolutely priceless. We were doing a cold water dive up in uh, Keyport, Washington, and it was 28 degrees, snow was falling. It was an all-night dive. You were doing it. I was going to work the surface, you know, pre-dove the boat before we went to drop it in, and you're down getting in the boat, getting ready to get in the water, and I turned up the heat on my rent-a-car before I parked it and went out to uh, go get on the soup boat and had to crack the window, and it's, you got to do amongst friends and crack the window and hurry up and get in the water. I'm letting all the, the heat out of the car. We're all up from the heat inside the car. We're freezing. The water's freezing. Oh, my gosh. And just... We are talking about this earlier, man. I was like, you get to where you want, you're so pissed off, like you want to do something, and then someone mm-hmm. says something... They can really activate you and kind of send you a little bit over the edge, and then there's ones that will send you right past it. He was good at that. Yeah. You can bring those out. I'll, ne- I'll never forget that, man. There's there's quotes that that are that were passed to me that I passed on. You know, it, uh, you know, I got some good news and bad news. Uh, <laughs> bad news is uh, we got a suck job, and, you know, there's no way around it. It's, it's just, you know, sorry, and you're the junior guy, and – it's going to fall on you. The good news, though, is you're a perfect fit for it. Yeah. And this will motivate you to study and make rank. <laughs> so you're not that guy next time. Oh, man. God. Oh, my gosh. Well, after 40 years of being in the teams, looking back, what are some of the biggest things that you think are the best life lessons that resonate in the teams but also into Look, life? Let me, let me, first of all, this one of the smoothest things I remember watching you do, man, is we had this surprise – office inspections like we're the, the xo the, the match chief and the ceo walk in and look at our space like our platoon hut like check the computers for dust do all that and we didn't know that was going down so someone come we're all sitting in the platoon space just kind of just doing whatever and somebody comes running is like hey the, the head sheds in here got a surprise room inspection we're all looking around and we're all looking at chief like what do we do and he just kind of sits there for a second goes all right everybody take clothes off so leave your boots on and then go back to doing what you were doing so you got one guy hanging out of the refrigerator, butt ass naked, cleaning the inside of the refrigerator. Pittman had the vacuum cleaner, right? And was yep. doing the vacuum, and yep. Alvario was dusting. I was sitting at the table. He was at the computer typing. Everyone's butt ass naked except for their boots. And then the leadership walks in the door, takes one look at us, says, "Oh my God!" Walks right out. <laughs> Never came back. That was it. Never they, came back. We the, passed with flying colors. They heard. They heard the howl as they I departed. Mean, he, and I just remember the skipper's face as Lucy he kind of did his head. He's like, "Good one. That was a good one, man." <laughs> oh I mean, that kind of stuff in the moment when you just, I like, I had, I was like, "How are we gonna get through this?" And he's like, "Watch this, boom." Oh my god. The mass chief told me later. Oh, he said the skipper looked at him. He goes, "Uh." I don't know how to deal with that. Mm. <laughs> that was the best, man. Something ain't right there with those boys. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, but you gotta, you gotta have fun. And I remember we were driving. Um, we had one of the, the whalers. We were in Washington. Yeah, driving back. We were driving back from it was, it had, uh, just he, just he and I. And there, we had this huge map. We had to keep breaking out. And there was a ferry lane that keeps driving through that hauls all these cars from one place to the other. And I just remember going, hey, man, what time is that ferry thing going out? And we're going around this place. It's like, we get the map out. So we get the map out. And in our boat, we have these these like little missile-looking things that do radar and sonar. Really, really expensive and brand new. And as we have the map out in front of the windshield. Got the radar. Got the radar every, going. Yeah, everything's GPS going. Water. I mean, the boat's hauling ass. I'm driving. He's navigating. And we're looking for this thing. You All of a sudden, you just hear the boat going from a nice on the thing to this. You, you can hear the prop come out of the water. And then you heard the motor rev up, and all of a sudden, everything just went to slow motion. And we're kind of looking at each other. I come out of my seat. He comes out of his seat. Eyes I, locked. I, eyes I, locked. Eyes locked on each other. I flip into his seat. He flips up. <laughs> and we hit that that wake off of that boat. Hit the deck. And, I mean, it, it launched us out of the air. And yeah. I mean, when the, we hit the ground, the boat went sideways. The throttle came back. All the gear was gone. Everything had flown out of the boat. I'll never forget that one. That was it. Was good. We got the gear. I thought, yeah, we did. We found we, it. We, we got just the broke gear. that one little thing on the back of it. And I looked at him all in us, and I said, "Let's not talk about that just yeah. yet. We'll work <laughs> that one out." And lesson learned for both of us. Twenty years later, ah, there was there was some good ones, man. Jumping that high, jumping that four by four into the back of that helicopter that one time. Oh yeah, 
Oh, in Iraq? A, yeah, and that Hilux in the back of a Chinook. Yep. And it was out oh, of, I did hear about a hose story. That's my greatest mission that I've ever pulled off in my entire life. We get surged into Iraq. It was a month after. We turned over to the platoon ahead of us, which which kicked off, actually. The begin, it was the beginning. The STV mission was the first mission of the war. Uh, and we turned over from that platoon, and they said, hey, uh, we need you to go up north to Lake Karbala, and uh, you're going to surge you know, in a Kuwait airstrip and then, in, you know, into Iraq, into Karbala. And we get to this airstrip and I told the guys, I said, load everything up, you know, full load out and then, then some on bullets and, and everything else and top the tanks off and all the gas. Uh, I had dash twos, which is, you know, the hazmat declaration to hand to the guys just so that, you know, the air crew and the pilot in charge knows what he has on board. And he looks at it and he goes, uh, your tanks are full. Yes, sir, they are. This is a combat mission. He goes, we need to have you drain them to three quarters. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know how long I'm going to be up there. I don't know where I'm going to get gas from. I want them full. Uh, all my jerry cans are full as well. And he's, he's like, I'm telling you, I need three quarters or this ain't going. So I'm like, oh, no. Okay, come back to the tune. Guys, we need, we need an Oklahoma credit card. Somebody find a host so we can. So I said it you know, siph siphon gas out of the tank and off they split. And we're in the middle of nowhere at this, you know, airfield. And when you know, to the amazement of me, and I to this day, I don't know, like I said, there's a lady in the lake that delivers Excalibur to King Arthur. That's right. And he comes back with a brand new garden hose. Just brand like, new. Brand new. I'm in the box. I'm telling you, like he had, like you had teleported to Ace Hardware. From the Ace Hardware. <laughs> And then teleported back. I, I'm not even kidding. I was scared. I was scared to talk to him. I was like, "Did you didn't you didn't you didn't freaking make, make a deal?" It was the coolest thing I've ever pulled off. And let me tell you something. There's something about our adventures together where you had the ability to get us an environment where it was just that environment. What I mean is, is that time we jumped out of the back of the Hilo about 500 miles out to where it was just ocean. Like you could, for as far as you could see, yeah, it was just ocean. Nothing. And then that time in the jungle. You got dropped in the jungle as far as you can see, just jungle. It's like being in the Matrix. Yep. And they slide some new frame in front of you. When they dropped us at that airport in that desert, we were in the desert. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as the eye can see, and they had that bunker. And I remember walking out there, and I'm like, where the, where the hell am I going to find a damn Oklahoma credit card? And I went around the side of this hangar to pee, and it was right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was awesome. It, sitting there. Like some gift from the Almighty, man. And I even it think I was. sent a prayer up. Yeah. I was like, God, I need a water hose. You got one handy? Yeah. I was, I was like, and he was like, right here. Here you go. In the damn box. It was. I was like, I showed up with that and the look, no one said anything. It like, scared me. I, 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 my face flushed. I'm like, no. Where, no. where did you even find that? <laughs> there was he nothing put, else there. He there, jumped there. dimensions. He, oh I think gosh. he did. I mean, I must have because I, I mean, that was the coolest. I'll never forget it. Every time I see a water hose in the, in the Hayes Harder when I go oh down there. Oh, my God. I, I do the same I thing. I got ridden up for an award. He wrote me up for an award for that. Yeah. <laughs> we, we drained it, you know, uh, went went up there, did the thing. And I still to this day, I'm still shaking my head going, I no, I don't I believe it. I don't believe it just show there. I mean, there no leprechaun, no portal. You that know. That is crazy. It was great. You, you didn't find a genie bottle open? I, the okay, so... <laughs> When he, he looked at me, he's like, okay, you got one. You got a good one. I mean, if I screw up, you know, I normally yeah, I'm like, work I'm, on my silver bullets a lot. I'm, I'm, like, that's, <laughs> I'm like, that's silver bullet. Silver bullet for you. And he, when he would you, give me those, you, I'm like, you, yeah. You, you pull that any time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. I needed them. So uh, that I had a lot of fun. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah, that was a great one. Yeah. Freaking good one, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's fun. It's fun doing workups with guys. And the big thing with the platoon that I liked about our platoon at that time, I had asked the CEO and the, the master chief, hey, look, because we all, you know, our, our structure was we deploy independent. We might meet up with people, but if there is some sort of disciplinary function to be had, uh, I said, it's the way I was raising the team. It's done by the leadership. We'll inform the leadership, hey, this happened. This is what we intend to do to deal with it, but we want to do it internally ourselves. So it is. That's the best. Yeah, it is by the Navy, but we, we have to be an independent, deployable thing and uh you know th there'd be stuff that go on and like all platoons uh you would have uh the book of woe for mess ups and you would refer back to the book of woe and charge guys spears or I, more cases of beer and my name had been through there but they it took care of it in-house yeah if i had to get my ass beat by it was in-house mm -hmm. but that's the best way to do it it is it is and everything uh you know uh 
going going through and you see stuff that is embedded in, embedded into me. My my mentors, uh, you know, I I had a tear in my eye. You know, one day he came in and I was getting on him. You know, I had you know looked at his looked at his hair and his sideburns and was like, hey, you know, pull those up. And he he had brought in his uh, seals are notorious for pushing hair regulations, but I'd I'd been to Seal Team Two, which is known as at times Stalag Two. Stalag Two, yeah. And uh, you you get right and tight uh, with the regs. Rudy Bosch used to guys coming out of Vietnam, crossing the quarter deck from Vietnam, would look at them, not say anything. Next day, hey, you got weekend duty. Why, Rudy? Well, he came across my quarter deck and he had shaving hair. How about that work. man, Rudy? He was a great man. God rest his soul. But uh, uh, I I told you once, and you're like, come on, man. So he would punish everyone. He would punish my buddies instead of me. That's how he got me to do it. Peer pressure works. I mean, the minute my the like my platoon mates would be coming up, but hey, you know I'm getting squeezed because of you, right? And I'm like, what? You clever son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> And I, because oh I mean, if I did my ass, well, that was a different story. But They're like, like the, shave your damn sideburns. The sideburns were, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was my thing. And uh, I used to get in trouble with those all the time. And then you self corrected. And I did. Two years, two years, you know, plus, you know, I was San Diego, you called me up and you just started cussing me out. You know, you rotten old. I remember that. When I, when I got put in charge, I yeah. was like, I'm so sorry for all that shit I, I gave you and I didn't follow the rules because I'm having to deal with my guys. You're like, I, I just. Same stuff, Prince. Same stuff. I came at you with. I was getting it. It brought a tear to my eye. I was so proud. I called my mentor. And I remember said, that phone call. Yeah, I was like, "Good morning, Marcus." And you were you were done cussing like, me out I the first like, five minutes. Sorry, it was awesome. I was like, "Damn you for all this pain," but also I'm sorry for. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, I what I, comes around goes around. Yeah, I had the it, same. It went, especially when I can see it too. You know, I'm pretty. <laughs> I can see it. I was like, oh. A dose my own medicine is what he call it. And I'm like, it, yeah, I get that sometimes. It, I had the same thing happen to me where I was a young guy getting yelled at by my XO. Hey, what do you do? You know, I got called up from the formation, which is never a good thing. Yeah, if you don't you know. know the award's coming, it's you. <laughs> Wait, am I getting an award? Probably not. No, and it was, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, hey, you know, young young petty officer Gothro is getting an award. And uh, the XO, John Ty, said, this is a good example of a bad example. I don't want to see anybody's hair like this. And then the horde descended upon me to throw me in the dip tank. Yeah. My senior chief met me after, and he goes, uh, you got weekend duty to figure out what you want to do here. And the last thing I'm going to say is I'm never going to have this discussion about your hair or uniform again. Otherwise, you're leaving this organization. Oh, I think that, that that's like the senior chief's job. Yeah. Because like, the senior chief, he's, that's who did that to me. Yeah. Pulled me up to the front. Yep. And started commending everybody about good shit. And then it was like, this is the bad shit. Yeah. This, this, that's what he said to me. I, I was all like, hey, I'm getting... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what? You're pulling what? me out. Yeah, yeah it's for my for dumb, you know, for dumb stuff. Yeah, and that I went to that same XO and I said, "Look at this, look at this." Now I just hair loss. Say, hey, man, I just want a hot tub. I don't, I don't want anything right? else. I'm like, come on, <laughs> exactly. I, don't, I don't need Rogan. Don't need any hair plugs. I just want a hot tub, man. Thinking oh that they God. don't know every line in the book. Yeah, that's the thing that you forget about the senior leadership. You think they're senior and old, but they're senior seals. Yes, which means they're. Excellent at this whole game. They are. And they, they love it. And they, they don't get worse. They get better. And That's what that rank means in our community. As as I got motivated and great joy from seeing you, you've Dude, gotten great joy from Yeah, guys, guys coming up. It does. And and part of the game we've discussed, you gotta play the poker face Freaking and uh God, man. let them let them yeah. walk out of the room and then do your laughing. And, and then do it. Oh, when I found that out, I was like, How do you I was like, please just this is years later. I'm like, it's one of the times I got tuned up. I was like, please tell me you were laughing though at it after you walked after I walked out. I'm like, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm but like, thank God. As he said at the start, if you can make the Chiefs mess laugh, if in you front of you, laugh, you're, you're golden. <laughs> I think that's the only reason I sustained is because I had a great attitude. Well, and uh, you were very capable to say the least. Very capable, and your performance has proven it. And yeah, you do make everybody laugh. I never claimed to be the best team guy. I just I just wanted to be one, and yep. that was my I was squared away. Yeah, and I, could, I had a great sense of humor. That's all I try to do, you know, keep up with the pack. And there's some I've known some stellar people in this community that are just intimidating. Yeah, intimidating, incredible, uh, incredibly talented. Uh, I had I had to, you know, uh, I feel like I'm a lot of team guys. You have to work at it. Nobody, nobody, yeah. very few people are really blessed. But actually, those guys have their own cross. To they bear. got their own problems. And, they probably uh, got it worse. Yeah, in our yeah. Community. They they aren't used to uh, to really you know I've seen guys not have to struggle to be world class. Yeah, and when they get hit with challenges, you know, then that separates them. They either uh, stay in the teams, you know, or shall I say, make it through tra- training and stay in the teams. 
because uh, I've seen world class training or world class trained athletes just fold under pressure and buds. Yeah. And it all comes down to you got to want it. You got to want it. You got to have the attitude. And every guy in the same doesn't matter his height, size, whatever is has been through it. That's why our humor is similar. I think the guys who once you learn how to, to deal with other guys' problems, yeah. like those those amazing athletes, they don't like to deal with other people's shit. Well, what we do is we do. Yeah. If especially if it's one of them. And I think that's another reason why guys are so hard on themselves is because it's not their problems. It's usually we take on our buddies. Yeah. And that is, that's what a teammate is. It's like, Hey man, I know you're good at this, but is he, cause if he's not, then you can't be. So you suffer together. And those, those are what, that's how it works. Yeah. That's being a swim buddy. Is swim all buddy about. Yeah, man. Be a swim buddy, be a, be a teammate. Like I never had one problem in my life until I joined the teams. Yeah. And I have team problems. Yeah. And I, t- I tell you what, and I have always loved the teams. That's, for me, it was nice to do, you know, the 40 years combined and, you know, within the community and help the community. I didn't have to do that transition. And I understand guys that get out after, you know, an enlistment, two enlistments, or even when they retire and go, and you, you miss that camaraderie that you take for granted with the guys you work with. That uh, It's just so dang fun. I mean, you know, hey, we're going to do something that sucks, but, hey, we've, you know. We'll make it fun. We'll make it fun. Yeah, we'll grunt, grunt through it. I remember we'd have those hard months, like going grinding and grinding. We'd show up one day and you'd take us to race go-karts. Yeah. Got it. Or just something completely out of the standard, go eat somewhere nice, or just go to a barbecue, or we'd go out and do something. And I remember thinking, well, that's all you needed. Yeah. Just to, and, and to, to be able to do that. Great leader. Like, read your men. Thank, thank like, read, you. Yeah, read them, and yeah. then you'll know. And you, you were good at that. Thanks. I appreciate it. I've, you know, it was, I... I give it all to mentors that train me the same way. You work hard, you play hard, and there's times you got to take breaks, take a knee, uh, take an assessment, and then get back at it. But it can't always be stick. You have to have some carrot. You got to have some. Uh, got to have some good food. Uh, feed. <laughs> That's clutch, man. Yeah, I'm not doing anything for that. Yeah. One of the things that I want to finish on is you had mentioned earlier when we were talking the um, fundamentals forgotten. Because mm-hmm. I think that's super important just in life. Can you explain that? It really is. There's there's a thing called uh, lessons learned that is is common in, in any military organization. And I think generally at the tactical uh, level, it's always passed on through this, this encounter, this engagement, this what we did, or even this battle. But the way it's applied, I think, and they want it applied, and the way it was brought to me is, very few lessons are are really learned. It's a, it's going to fundamentals forgotten, fundamental issues in training, issues in organizations that uh, somehow, uh, as as the ebb and flow goes, that people forget about uh, training or giving uh, giving some sort of thought towards certain things like, hey, you know, they used to do this. Well, that was different. Well, there's a reason that guys used to do that. And a lot of the, the stuff in training that we do uh, is, unfortunately, it's it's a harsh it's it's a harsh environment. We've lost quite a few guys just in training, just as much as we've lost, uh, almost as much as we've lost, unfortunately, in combat. But you have to train hard to survive. How about that? Like, mm-hmm. you, when we, I remember when we went out the door for the first time and did some work, I was like, it was kind of, I thought we did it wrong. Because we'd overtrained for we'd it. We'd overtrained for it. Yeah, that's what you, you know, it's it's like police, it's like firefighters, and of course, uh, it, you know, in, in the services, you have to go for the worst case scenarios. I mean, uh, stuff, we had him lead. Uh, one of the fun things I'd do is at the end of every evolution is, hey, we're doing we're doing a casualty drill and we're sticking IVs. And uh, yeah, you did do that. So we knew the guys that were good, you know, oh, yeah, you're good, Don't 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 worry about him, but we would let the guys that weren't so good get good on us and then progress that up to... I mean, he'd pull that out right in the worst when I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I'd been in the water all night, come out of there, getting in the back of a truck, driving down the road. He's like, hey, do an IV. Or like we're in the back of the boat or something. Yeah. Just when... And you, if you if you know your people and you read them, is like right in that piece of shit moment when they're like, I'm glad this is about over. Boom, hit them with the damn... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <sighs> we'd call a wounded man drill, and I'd never call you know the small guy uh, in the platoon. It'd be it'd, giant. It'd be one of the big guys. You know, that's that's who we got to work with. That's what we got to work. And it's like you know the guy the guy that's playing the you know 
uh, the dummy usually gets drugged and beat around a bit. Beat to death. Yeah, beat to death. But it's good. It's good training, and as painful as it is, it's it's. It's usually the guy who mouthed off to him and talked back. Yeah. You. No, I was real respectful. <laughs> I can just get to say that. But uh, I mean, I didn't run my mouth, but it was never disrespectful. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that th- there was ways. There's ways. That's yeah. that fundamental too, man. Like, hey, there's ways to get you guys in check. Yeah. 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 And there's there's ways also for for young team guys to and and that's that's how they learn to do it how how to voice concerns in and intact in different environments and you love to hear how they put it and you can tell when they're that's call, the best how they call you out and how the hell you call them out <laughs> yeah and it, that call goes both ways it does that's the best yeah when you because there's a there's an eloquence to talking shit yeah like some people just kind of like you've effed up and then some people will really dive it in there and just say it real brilliantly to where you're like oh man that was good dude that was good. You said something earlier because with team guys, say you had to do something the night before, you have to physically tell them to go to bed, don't drink. Yeah. It's, it's, it's if you don't tell them something, they'll go do it and just think it's fine. Mm-hmm. And what happens is, is a lot of people don't want It's not being a leadership. It's not being mean or anything. It's telling them. Yeah. And that gets overlooked because team guys will find a way. Mm-hmm. They'll just find a way. Yeah. The minute you cut them loose and that beer lamp's on, and forget about it. Don't even talk to them until the next morning. Yeah. Yeah. And And – you know that's that's the scary part, uh, but that's also part of trust and leadership going both it, man, ways. Yeah. You got to know your people, and uh, you got to know, hey, you know, uh, hey, you know, watch it. Yeah, you know, and as a buddy, as a peer, doesn't matter uh, where you are as a junior or a senior person. You got to look across your peers and say, hey, dude, man, let's let's pull them <laughs> throttles back a bit, or hey, yeah, hey, you know, hammer down, hammer down, hammer man. down, lock them throttles forward. Like you, because you can have somebody and you know they're like best friends, and they'll and they'll, someone will ask them, like, hey man, so do you have a drinking problem? He's like, nah, and he's like, yeah. yes, you do. Yeah, Hell yeah, you do. You know what I'm talking about? But it's, yeah. it's kind of that's the guy you need. Yeah, and that's what each one of us provides. Yeah, like someone always watches out for the other one. Well, Marcus always talks about how you are just the baddest ass man in the whole wide world and he puts you up on this big pedestal and loves you so much but one of his favorite stories to tell other people is that now you are a navy seal shotgun competing uh cat smuggler <laughs> yes i'm a cat transport specialist cat transport <laughs> cat yes. transport so if i had to hide the, the baddest dude on the planet down somewhere where people wouldn't look for him it'd be driving a prius Transport and rescue cats kittens. from kittens from the shelter. Yeah, with yeah. his multiple shotguns in the back because he just came back from a competition. Yeah, yeah. Yep. He was working at the team earlier that day so and been to driving school, been to shooting schools. Yes. And you, one of the funniest stories I've heard is when you cat were, people are gonna love you. Yeah, when you were um, driving, not prepared to, your wife called you and said, "Hey, swing into this foster care place." And you had to pick up a whole litter of kittens. So I support my wives, as we all support our wives, uh, I'm sure. And one of the deals uh, for me to do my shotgun shooting is, hey, can you help me? You know, as I'm coming back from the range, there's a shelter near you. Uh, Just go up there, tell them who you are. Uh, With my wife's rescue that she worked with, she saved well over a 1,000 animals. And just that in itself, you're doing karma. You're, You're saving an animal's life. And you're giving it to a family and that animal we know that animal for a portion of our life that animal knows you for its entire life and it's it's a sacred bond in itself and i, I like that i like supporting her and so i show up hey do you guys got a carrier no we don't okay so i just come back from shooting i had an empty flat of shotgun shells go in there hey bring it in load the cats in put it in the cab of my truck folded the top down put a couple extra boxes of shells I hadn't shot out of the box of 250. And uh, off I go. And, of course, on SoCal Highway on the the I-15, which is a very busy uh, (laughs) highway, uh, I'm driving. Next thing I know, I got... That's an understatement. I got got cats now running around the cab in front of the truck. And I'm like, oh, crap. Oh, shit. (laughs) Oh, no. Over, you know... Cross from the two lane over the four lane into the emergency lane and make sure I'm clear so I'm not going to get nailed by a truck or anything. Uh, and I'm like, you know, damn, how many casts did they send me? Because, I, you know, they just hand me a box when I gave them the box. I didn't ask, you know, what's the head count? You know, and so I get the cats, re-get them, fold it down, go home. And that's when I realized that you're just the bank robber 
uh, driver yeah. for the gang. So <laughs> I keep thinking of the Jason Statham, the transporter movie, when, I, when every time you, you yeah. send me a text saying that you're doing that. So I'm in for penny, in for a pound, and I said, all right, I'm in. So, honey, I need a collapsible cardboard box to put in the back of the truck underneath my shooting <laughs> cart. Uh, and uh, I'll have it. So if I get a no notice call to pick up, you know, four bodies, you know, I'll be there. That is hilarious. That's how it comes across the text message, too, like that. Oh, my god! Which is amazing to me because I've seen how you treat humans sometimes. And the fact that you're just the lovable kitten transporter <laughs> is absolutely baffling to me. Some of our guys, when they get out, yeah, what they fall into. It's crazy. It's awesome. I love it. Those, are, those awesome. are the best stories. Yeah. I was yeah. telling someone who asked me the other day, I've been wearing long sleeves lately, kind of covering up all my what I was. And I, you know, I'm got, eventually I want to be a deacon in my church. Yeah. So like when I have grandkids, it's like, hey man, I wouldn't want, I want them to look at me like they couldn't even imagine me upset or getting angry. And that's what I think about the guys who trained me and I hear about all that. I'm like, man, if you knew what that son of a gun was capable of. and I are looking at each other like. Capable of, <laughs> the fact that he does that is, yeah. like those two worlds don't go together. You know what I'm talking about? It's, it's in my mind when I, when I see it, when I see that. You know, I'm there, I'm supporting her and her needs. I'm supporting the rescue, which I really enjoy doing. And by all means, there's different things to do. You can either, uh, like my wife, she does medical stuff for them, rescuing high-risk uh, animals, both cats and dogs. She's a trained vet tech. Uh, she also, you know, there's people need to do coordination. They need to do uh, logging in, you know, data on the cats. There's people that foster and do the foster. People like I do, which is I just move food and food and animals down, down the you know the rat line yeah, from, but you do something else because you re you transport the cats that go to get adopted but then they get rejected so you what are those called the rejects uh the foster fails foster fails thank you yeah you said that loud. i never heard that yeah foster fails and some of them uh as cats go down and don't you know people don't like them for uh whatever reasons as they get older and older they get harder and harder to adopt so we generally do Newborn cats. Well, yeah, cats have personalities, correct? They do. I they mean, really they do. they get they like you, they don't. Yeah, and I tell you what, I've seen uh, you see in animals a lot of things, and you see character come out, and there's mm. ones that are memorable fighters that fight through diseases, uh, incredible, uh, you know, little animals that you know will be good, you know, pets for yeah for families, but uh, then you also see uh, some ones that. And you and you have to let the adoptee know that that hey this is a cat's personality it likes other cats or it's, it's good solo and not good around animals. We socialize with our animals in our house, cats and dogs uh, socialize with us. So I've uh, seen enough on the internet. Cat people are they they're a, a kind their own breed. Yeah, they're, 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 I'm real careful about how I talk about them. I want them to know that I really you know I, I appreciate them. I love them, man. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I fought for you. Right? I, yeah, because I, I, <laughs> they. They love those animals. That's they hilarious. do. They do. And uh, you know, God bless them for that passion. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to support that. And like I said, I like seeing, to me, I like seeing the families, you know, a year a year later. You know, when you get the cat, yeah. the cat, or we've done dogs as well, uh, you get them through, and uh, mainly cats. But you see the families light up, and, you know, a year later, and they're, they're, they're happy. And that, that, it's a good success story. It's kind of like you pick that when people adopt dogs, they pick the dog. Like the cat picks you, right? It's kind of they get their personality is designed yeah. to like, oh, yeah, I can hang out here. Yeah, exactly. That's what I've heard that. Yeah, and some cats, like you said, they they don't adopt, and we have, uh, you know, our our house cats. I said, hey, we're we're Max. You know, we we've had a couple fails that we've adopted, and you know, there are ones that we also you know liked. If I got one, I've wanted, and I've never had one, but I'd, every time I think about it, all I see in my head is a big old whatever Garfield was. Yeah. The biggest orange fat son of a Big, big old tabby. Yeah, what, I, what is it? A tabby. Is that what he is? Mm -hmm. Your friends at work, I'd tell them uh, at the time. Are they good? Pink, are they great cats? I, I don't know anything about them. I had, the, the great, actually, the orange tabby is, they found this, they've done studies, is the oldest domesticated cat in the world came out of Egypt. Orange tabby. Oh, cat. yeah. Um, and, uh, something about that one. Yeah. But I tell friends at work, hey, if you know we're having a special on cats, you know, uh, two for one, you know, two go out better, and uh, you just you just tell me the make and model, and we'll get it to you. Tell me, you know, make, model, color. Uh, <laughs> That's Anybody awesome. Anybody want a cat? Yeah. Gothro's your man. Yeah, I mean anything from you know Maine Coons to Siamese to we had. I didn't realize it. She told me, but we had some of the rarest cats come through, and there, there are no brown cats out there. Brown. Brown is, you know, they got gray, there's black, there's white, there's mm -hmm. calico, both types of calicos. Is that true? 
Yeah. That sounds true now that I think about it. Brown cats are such rarity. And we had four of them, so we named them after after coffees. You know, oh, mocha, so cappuccino, espresso, uh, and latte. And super rare, but they got adopted. I mean, there's people that fly cross country to pick up these animals. They do, right? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. That, that just, they look online. You know, they, they do digital advertising. Another job for the Okay, so I, yeah. I've had a lot of, like, especially over quarantine, had some time to watch the internet, yeah. see what people collect everything. The internet, cat videos. Cat videos, man. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> freaking, people will get online. I mean, it's that's an amazing thing. Yeah. Well, Chris Cothro, the cat smuggling Navy SEAL, badass, red cell, shotgun wielding American hero. Thank oh. you for coming on. That's a great resume. I know. I love you guys. We'll have to keep going on this one, man, because I got some great stories I need to, we need to plug on that. Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, uh, there's there's a lot, and I, I smile, and there's a lot I could go into that just so much fun being in the teams with your friends and uh, not just reliving the past, but also seeing you guys in the present and the future and what you're doing, and thank you guys for what you do. You guys have made huge differences to a lot of people, and, mm-hmm. and you're different uh, – various charities and uh work and honestly that's that's wonderful oh well we love having you as part of our family i'm sorry it's taking me a while to get back to texas <laughs> <laughs> it's all right yeah tennessee now tennessee soon this is the team never quit podcast, podcast. don't buckle up buttercup <laughs> <laughs>